so the party fought over finding the magic item. Turns out it was the Hand of Vecna. The wizard wanted it. The sorcerer wanted it. The friggin' fighter wanted it because, of course, the fighter wants every magic item. They all thought about it. The wizard fireballed everybody. TPK. Sessions canceled. The table will flip. Hey, it's me. It's your boy. It's Matt. We're back with another awesome episode. The Sessions Canceled podcast. Matt, don't set the bar that high. Nope, it's right here. It says it right here on uh, we we've been looking at our, our fantastic reviews on YouTube from commenter hamster chipmunk 69. Uh, this podcast is at oh, wait. All right. I should have filtered these out before uh, I, saying I don't this. like I don't like the idea of chipmunk and a hamster with that number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I I I, I was going to try and let that one go. Anyways, no, I uh, refuse. <laughs> we're back. A dinosaur. T- no. Uh, what? It's it's me. It's <laughs> what the I'm going to be good, tonight. bro. <laughs> what the fuck no, are you I'm not. About Apparently that? you are in a fucking mood. <laughs> I'm here with Josh. Yeah, I mean I'm here, I guess. I say <laughs> What's up? I'm also here equally as confused. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. You guys just don't have that, like, you know, random thought that, like, peeks through when you're, like, saying something and reminds you of another thing and then you just have to say it. I mean, yeah, I just don't understand what the dinosaur or whatever the fuck you just said. <laughs> it's a movie. It was an old movie by Don Bluth. It's called We're Back, A Dinosaur Tale, about a guy who makes a bunch of dinosaurs super smart and then they sends him into Manhattan in the future of the 90s. <laughs> And he has an adventure with a street kid and some rich girl, and they this fight uh, our evil ringmaster who no. runs the evil circus. It's a crazy time, and they're trying to, all they want to do is just go to a museum and educate kids about dinosaurs. I'm this- so lost, and I'm here recording. It's a great movie. Great, fantastic movie. It has nothing to do with tabletop. It was a movie? Whatsoever. What the fuck? Oh, wait, hold yeah, on. Dude, Don Bluth. Okay, Fucking- side note it's called We're Back a Dinosaur Story. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was a dinosaur uh, Oh, tale. that movie. But also, oh, why this sounds like the most Matt movie I've ever heard, like childhood it Matt really movie is. I've ever heard <laughs> in my life. It is, it is absolutely, I've seen this movie quite a few times. It is absolutely a Matt movie. I, it's a great movie. This T-Rex Fantastic. does look vaguely familiar. So yeah. maybe I've seen it? Oh yeah, you must have. You grew up You, you grew up there around the same time I did. I mean, You almost yeah. certainly have. Maybe? At least once. It was on Disney Channel, probably. I feel like I didn't watch the Don Bluth stuff a lot. <laughs> is it just me or is Don Bluth shit always just a little creepy looking? Um, He had right. more like adult and like themes in his movies and stuff just, and design. No, no, just like the, the like, characters. Like hyper-realistic dinosaurs in the, the char- fucking land before time. The characters always just look a little creepy. Just a smidgen, you know? There's just a little something. You know what I mean? Hmm. I mean, have you seen Rasputin? No. From Anastasia? Yeah, look him up. What? Look up, eh. look up, uh, type in Anastasia Rasputin. You've probably seen it like a, like that. Basically, uh, like what if uh, Necromancer oh, yeah, would, uh, yeah, would yeah, be yeah, a, yeah, in yeah, a yeah, Disney yes. movie? Yes, I, I have. I Oh, actually, I watched this movie. Yes, I did watch this yeah. movie. Fun fact, also not a Disney movie. I'm aware it's not. This one I knew was not a Disney movie for some reason. I don't know how I knew that wasn't a Disney movie, but I feel like I did know it wasn't. There was a, a time, I don't know the full story, but Don Bluth was making a bunch of old, like movies himself, like Anastasia and, and We're Back and Land Before Time was the big ones. Uh, all Dogs Go to Heaven. I've definitely Did seen All Dogs Ferngully? Go to Heaven. All Dogs, wait a, minute, he, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I all Dogs so. Go to Heaven was I, Don Bluth? Yes, sir. That movie's a banger. Yes, sir. That was Don Bluth. Anyways, we are not a Don Bluth podcast. I mean, uh, we could become one though. We could. All right, guys, we're switching it up. We're not. Damn, talking I didn't about realize that was Don Bluth. <laughs> that movie was so fucking. Ba- I loved that movie when I was younger. I thought that was the shit. I loved that German yeah. Shepherd. Mm. I think he was supposed to be a German Shepherd. I assume. <laughs> I think so. He looks like a German Shepherd. Also, yeah. Anastasia, kind of hot. Just saying, mm. just gonna put that and, one out there. Uh, what if a Disney princess was not a Disney pr- princess and also Russian? Yeah, no, kind of hot. Yeah, you know. was Anastasia the one with the weird white bat creature? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, the bat creature was what the the, the bad guy. It was Rasputin's, Rasputin's Iago, minion. Basically. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. He was a white bat. A Bartok. White albino bat. Yeah. Bartok. No, I know. I I like it. I saw Anastasia like several times growing up, but I do not remember a bat. 
<laughs> yeah, Bartok, the little white bat guy. He got his own bat. movie, too. He did get his own movie. In what? Yeah. yeah, Bartok the Magnificent. He was so popular. He got his own movie, apparently. Yeah. I actually have the VHS. <laughs> of course oh, you do. This <laughs> fucking guy. What? Yeah. Weird. Yeah. He's a bat. Forgot he was part of. Yeah. That's right? crazy. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. I guess now you can transition us out. <laughs> Before I transition us out into that, uh, Josh, you want to tell the people uh, what they can do? If you want to hear us not talk about Don Bluth in the future i can't guarantee that actually i shouldn't make that promise we could talk about Don Bluth in the future. i don't know <laughs> but if you i i don't know what to do i don't know how to respond to that how you feel about that situation you should just hit follow or subscribe or whatever you're listening on that's what you should do right now exact the moon though i have no yeah, segue boys. i have no segue for you good luck Matt. Uh, that's fine that's fine just that, that's good Matt, save us please there's no anyway, saving so, this um as I've been previously told, uh, actually, no, we are going to be following trends today, everybody. Uh, I feel we're like going we're a little a late on this trend. <laughs> super late, heavily late. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we are going to be doing what is referred to as a three by three, except because this is a podcast and we are doing a audio, we are going to be describing to you what the fuck we are talking about. If you are watching on YouTube, I will put the three by threes in the video so you may look upon them. Sick. But just for anybody who doesn't know what a three by three is, it's, it's where nine you show your three hottest pictures of your pe- what? Sorry, I your three hottest family. pictures of whatever you want. You know, it could uh-huh. be your peener, it could be yeah, anything yeah. else. Mostly it's uh favorite things or things that represent you or what have you. You can have a three always, by three of different of other stuff. I've <laughs> always understand it as the three by three is nine things from the topic in question. That represents your vibe, if you will, for the topic in question. So like when people do an anime three by three, they're not saying that it's like the nine best or even necessarily their nine favorite anime. It's like these are the nine anime that encapsulate my anime being. Mm, Right. Yeah, that's that's always been my understanding. I kind of did a mixture of that with mine where like some of them are just magic items I really like and I think are really cool. And then some that have actually been like impactful on me either as a player or dia <laughs> i went purely on vibes i my magic mm-hmm. items are all vibes mine are uh ones that i've used and really liked or ones that have really fun like flavor that i really like like paprika oh. or chocolate yeah. sure <laughs> <laughs> that's a flavor what yeah uh so i guess for this what i'm gonna do is i'm oh, gonna oh. pull up Yep, one, yep, uh, yep. one other important yep. thing to note with the three yep. by threes uh they are not in any kind of order that's another important part it's not like this is number one this is number two this is number three they're, they're not in order they are just nine of equal value roughly equal value yeah. important so, note. Uh, we, we never, will be saying never, them in an order obviously but yeah. We never also discussed fully if we wanted to do everybody goes round robin style like we normally do, or do we do the three by three where one person goes, they say all nine, then another person goes, they say all nine. I, f- I, 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 I mean, I feel like we should do it one person, then the next person, then the next person. I feel okay. like round robin is going to be really awkward. Yeah, a little. I was thinking that too, but I, I figured. Actually, I no, we're definitely not going to do round robin because I'm not going to round robin the graphics. So that's too much work. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's probably for the best. Okay. Uh, so Matt what I'm going to do? I'm going to use a handy dandy Google calculator, and I'm going to roll a dice. Uh, and basically, a calculator. You're going to use a calculator to roll yeah, dice. Google calculator to roll dice. Uh, Josh is one. I'm two. Isaiah is three. And uh, rolling a four is a re-roll. Oh, here we go. I. Okay. Number four. Fuck you, Google. <laughs> Number four. Burger Number King one. There you go. <laughs> and if you want, I'll screen cap. It. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'll screen cap it for you too if you don't. Believe. I don't. Re- I mean, I don't need a screen cap. I believe you. I just, I just wasn't. I, <laughs> fucking okay. four. Goddamn. Fuck. Alrighty. I mean, fucking. Here we go. Uh, hold on. Before, let me just, let me just jot mm-hmm. down a note for no particular reason. Yep. Uh. Okay. So. My three by three. Uh, like I said, I went entirely off vibes on this. Mm-hmm. Um, and Matt and Isaiah, if you look at my list, I you might notice a theme, which yeah. is which is to say weapons. 
You like swords? Yeah. I like weapons. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. So just to go down the list, my three by three I went with is Flame Tongue, Circlet of Blasting, Cloak of Protection, Dancing Sword. Oh, should I be saying what book they're in? Those are all he DM. Can. Those are all DMG. Sunblade from the DMG. Potion of Dragon's Majesty from Fizzbins. Awakened Dragon's Wrath Weapon from Fizzbins. Astromancy <laughs> Archive from Tasha's. And the Devotee Sensor from Tasha's. And then because Matt wanted us to throw in some honorable mentions. To, I don't know, just because. Uh, I honorable <laughs> mentions. I got Frostbrand from the DMG. The Necklace of Fireballs from the DMG. And the Lantern of Revealing from the DMG. Which is probably the weirdest Ooh. one that stands out the most. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, How I guess, do I, um, where do I, I don't know where to go from here, Matt. So either we can, I don't know, Isaiah, is there one that in particular you're kind of looking at being like, huh, why, Josh? Because there's, there's one or two on here. Yeah. I don't know uh, what the devotee sensor does. Okay. Ooh, it's a good one. The devotee sensor is awesome. Again, I went mostly with, so like some of these actually have mechanics that I'm kind of whatever about, but the devotee sensor is just so sick because the mental image of it is amazing. It is, it is mm-hmm. a flail weapon where the flail head is a, is a religious sensor, right? So that thing, for those who don't know, a sensor is that thing that the priest swings back and forth and burns the sage on the inside of, and then he walks up and down the aisles. That's what a sensor is. The devotee sensor is a flail as sensor, <laughs> So mm. it's a, it's you know it's a flail weapon and the end of it has the burning incense thing and you bludgeon people with said flail because paladin it's mostly intended to be like a paladin or a cleric weapon and you just whip that sucker around and bludgeon the shit out of people with the righteous wrath of god and i just think it's hilarious because it just feels like a warhammer weapon mm. like I'm beating uh, you to death fact. for the glory of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's, it's in, in Warhammer. A weapon in yeah, Warhammer. I'm sure it is because it feels like a Warhammer weapon. Uh, in terms of what it does mechanically, it's a flail. It does an extra D8 of radiant damage. And as a bonus action, you can emit a thin cloud of incense. Right. Incense. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that star- nice. that heal allies for 1D4 at the start of your turn or at the start of their turn. Whatever. Um at the start of your turn. Uh, so yeah, I just, <laughs> I just totally, I don't know, the idea of the really like aggro hyper Christian paladin just bludgeoning demons with a sensor is amazing. Like it's such a wild weapon. The art for it's, it's cool, so cool too. Yeah, uh, it's pretty good. I haven't gotten a chance to like use it or see it in game, but it's one of those ones that when Tasha's came out and I saw it, I was like, that's fucking amazing. Big fan. Asha's did such a good job of introducing class Class specific specific magic items. Yeah. Except for the monk. Fuck the monk, apparently. Yes. Oh, side note, it literally requires uh, a two uh, minute. Fizzbands fixed that. Uh, True. Fizzbands and the book of many things. True. Mm. Uh, Side note, you literally have to be a cleric or a paladin. Uh, It requires a two minute from a cleric or paladin. So, yeah. Uh, It's just, you know, Mm. loving Jesus sometimes gets you cool weapons. And by Jesus, I mean Lathander or whatever. Sure. Praise be the sun. Yeah. Um, flame tongue. Do I even need to say anything about flame tongue? Fire, fire sword. sword. Cool. No, it's pretty sick. I was saying I fire like, sword, ice sword. You had both of them on there. I, yeah, listen, <laughs> I know flame tongue is the most basic bitch pick in like the entire DMG, but I don't fucking care. Fire sword. Cool. Like, I don't. I don't you also have the, the sun sword, which is also what if I, fire sword, but, but lightsaber. It's just, it's just lightsaber. a lightsaber. Yeah, yeah I was going to say it's <laughs> literally just a lightsaber, but, but it's a lightsaber again with the holy wrath of Jesus backing it up. Mm-hmm. which is just is makes it that, funnier i forget the sun sword also has finesse right yeah yeah it does yeah. so if you're a rogue you could fucking yes <laughs> sneak attack you can be a rogue lightsaber. who loves jesus and sneak attacks with your lightsaber as you ram awesome. it up shards at shards what Sh- strods asshole yeah. take this shard you shadow wicked woman see it, it could just be because i watched dune recently but i kind of want <laughs> like a rogue to be like a Fremen with the sun sword screaming Lisa al It's that kind of energy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's the right Wadi! vibe. Wadi! <laughs> S- just shouting as you fucking jump through the air and ram it through some dude's head. Wadi! I mean, yeah. Okay, real quick. I, just to quick, I, 
Uh-huh. Josh, uh-huh. you saw you saw Doom Part Two. That part where Paul is walking through this the the smoke fighting the Harkonnens and he yeah. just has the black cloak and the sun yeah. sandstorm and you're like, that is the coolest yeah. shot of this yeah. fucking yeah. movie. Yeah, where he just looks like some fucking like like a monster. Looks like yeah. some sta- some uh, desert themed Darth Vader. Yeah, and fucking Batista's character just just is like never. Yeah, he's like never direction. mind. I'm out. I fucked this shit. Yeah, he's like, no, I don't think I will. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, I'm gonna take this L. Yeah, <laughs> the universe is telling me that this is going to be a massive fucking. What L. the fuck is that character's? I always want to care that call that character Raubon, and I know that's not his name. Uh, Raban. Raban the Beast. God damn yeah. it. R a b b a n. Robin. I want to call him Raubon so bad. Uh, yeah, that's fair. I yeah. That that sounds more Dune like. It's it's a Final Fantasy character. Oh. My boy. Yeah. <laughs> the man, the myth. The girthy Rabon. The girthy Rabon mm. who fucks his little lowly wife. Mm. Girlfriend, whatever. Mm. Sir, she's twenty six. Mm. No, she's an adult, but she's she's mm. tiny. Mm. I know. Why did you say lolly? Other why did you just say lollafell? Uh, because the lolly that just made it sound so <laughs> sus. I mean, you know, I don't know. No, it's, look, it is sus. Don't it's a little sus. Wrong. It's a little sus. It, it is a little sus. But come on. Okay. All right. Yeah. Hear me out. Oh, I, uh-huh. I, I yeah. was I was talking about this at my D and D party. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I was talking about um, what's her name, the Sultana in Raubon. Uh huh. Uh, and uh, 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 Nanamo. Nanamo, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> I was like, yeah, man. The 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 fact that they're clearly smashing makes the the, the uh, like uh, what's his name Pippin makes his yes. whole thing really sad. Because it's like, oh, you're adopted. Wink, wink. You know, like. He's like, because I don't think Pippin knows. Uh, but no, he is adopted. He's literally adopted. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah but like, is he? Yes. I don't think I don't that's believe. like, I don't think that's up for debate. It's, it's, mm, I don't know. It's ironic. You have a lot. You got a Lollafell and a. The ages don't line up, my guy. Pippin's too old. True. He is pretty old. I don't know. Fucking potatoes grow like budding. Leave me alone. Anyway, <laughs> he's one of my players old. was like, one of my players was like, no, they aren't. What the fuck? And I was like, oh, no, no. Oh, you sweet summer child. My guy, Pippin is 25. Is he real? Yeah. Can't. I thought he was like 18. He's older than Nanamo. <laughs> she's 21. She's oh, 2.0 sus. onward. She's 21. <laughs> oh, no. God damn it. Anyway. Yeah. One of my players was like, no, they're not. And then she called one of her friends into my chat and she was like, Oh, no, they are. And she was like, no, no, they, I can't be the only one. I can't be the only one. It's like, no, you are the only one. Anyway. Wait, she thought that, uh, that Nanamo and Raubon weren't fucking? Yeah, no. She was like, no, no, they can't. No. Oh, no. you sweet summer child. Yeah. Everybody, <laughs> including the friend she called in, was like, oh, you sweet summer child. Uh, yeah, what? That's, I, oof. For anyone who's played Final Fantasy XIV, I, everyone's going to have the same reaction of like, how did you miss that one? But, okay. Uh, it may have been denial, you know? I, maybe, maybe. Uh, this is a weird tangent we went on. It, it, it is a very look. We've done that several times. Uh, this one is the weirdest by far. Uh-huh. Okay, I just, oh, we are moving on. All right, hold on. <laughs> I just need to. I found a really good piece of artwork of Raubon and Nanamo. Just gonna throw that one in there for those who are curious. Uh, go on uh, the Final Fantasy wiki and look up Raubon. There's a picture of him and Nanamo going to the beach. Amazing. God tier. I love the uh, I love <laughs> the other leaders yes, of the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did, like what? Oh, what the fuck is her name? Uh, Merle uh, Webb uh, and Kanisa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Airweb. My Webb. girl. Yeah. Smashing up one of the little onion dudes into the dirt. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Look at her monster. <laughs> uh, correct. <laughs> Where was I? Uh, yeah. Um. And then we got Circlet of Blasting. Yeah. That was uh, a good one. I, I just like the mental image. I don't know. The idea of like having your Cyclops visor on your head is just kind of a fun one. The Circlet of Blasting oh. isn't actually that exciting, right? It just lets you cast uh, Scorching Ray, which is like, whatever. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> Super useful, though. But the idea <laughs> yeah, of it's very cool. Huh? 
The circle of plastic, I always think of Squidward doing the Krakatoa. And then fucking blast. <laughs> I mean... I don't know that it's necessarily that's the intended vibe, but yeah. No, yeah. I mean, presumably it's, it, the circlet's got a ruby on the front. Presumably, like, you, like, touch the ruby and fucking, like, push your face forward and shoot beams out of yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, but I always like, imagine I you guess. do, like, a Professor Xavier, like, touch your temples or something like that. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, and for me, I just only think of Squidward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I could see that. I could it, see that. It actually probably looks more like Combustion Man from Avatar, I feel like. Probably, yes. I would say that's probably a safe bet, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think they actually have art for the circle. They do. Too. They do. It's it's very yeah. They, there's just like no a art. Tiara? Of them. It's very dainty yeah. looking. Yeah, it's a very dainty looking tiara thingy. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that explains that, why that was I, really I had just a, a cornerstone. For <laughs> it's a cornerstone. Yeah. What? Oh, it's like a corner. Like circlets are just a cornerstone of old fashioned fucking fantasy. Yes, Everybody they had are. Them yeah. They are. Yes, it, they're like super prevalent in Fire Emblem. Yes. They have a bunch in Baldur's Gate 3, too. Mm -hmm. Really? Nice. Yeah. Like, a lot of the magic items in Baldur's Gate 3 are, like, homebrewed ones they've made for the game. Basically all of them. Well, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Most of them are, bo are homebrews. Mm -hmm. uh, It'd be very cool to, like, homebrew them. God, some madman on the DM's Guild is going to reverse homebrew them and yeah. then put, sell it on the DM's Guild and make bank. Probably already did. Uh, yeah. Uh, cloak of protection is just a classic. I just like cool cloak that make mm -hmm. me harder to hit. It, it, it's a classic. It it just adds plus one AC, but like it's your sick billowing cloak that make you mm -hmm. tough. I yeah. I, four I will say the, yeah makes you four up. I will say <laughs> the um. The Cloak of Protection art is like, eh, it could be better. It's just is a blue it? cloak, right? It's mostly just a blue cloak, and then, like, the shoulder bits are, like, chain mail. But, you know, it does the job. It gets the vibe, which is really it's all cool. you need. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is just kind of like a blue. It's a blue cloak, it and it's got, like, like uh, chain mail bits around the shoulder area. Yeah, yeah. This kind of reminds me of the cloak uh, Jace Bellerin wears a little bit. It doesn't have the spiral patterns. I, I, I guess. Magic the Gathering. I, you know I, I know uh, who you're talking about. Oh, okay. I have the, the Jace Bellerin, um, like, hard box that you could get from Magic the Gathering. Why? Uh, I just have it. Uh, because it was a birthday present for a friend of mine, and I just never got to give it to him. He's still alive. I just... <clears throat> Didn't get to give it to him before I moved away. I gotta He's it still to him. alive, he says. I wasn't assuming he died. <laughs> well, I, you look, I don't know. It, me being like, I didn't get a chance to give it to him. Be like, oh, I'm so sorry. No, no, I just moved away. I, I, he's like, he's like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> sure. All right. Fair enough. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. The, the Cloak of Protection is very... It's very oh, classic D and D magic mm -hmm. item in my mind. Like it's the most classic style. Dancing sword is cool Castlevania reference. Do I need to justify the dancing sword? It's a cool floaty no. sword. You control it with your mind. Cool sword, cool. Yep. I, what yeah. else? What else do we need on that one? It dances. You can mm -hmm. live out your Alucard dreams. The art of it, I'm a little iffy on, but that's okay. Is it? Isn't the art of it? Ha it's like a shield in the front of it. No, that's or the no? defender. Yeah, defender. That's what I always. No, the up dancing with. sword. It's right is, next to it. In the, the dancing BMG. sword's like a cool looking long sword, but then the guard is tiny little wings, and I don't like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't like also the, the tiny handle wings. is like tiny and really bulky. Oh yeah, they I, are. I, yeah. It looks like it's supposed to be a Chinese gen, but maybe, maybe it's a Chinese gen. I don't know. Like a. Like a little scuffed for one, though. Yeah. It I, actually looks like the Soul Calibur from Soul Calibur 2. It does a little bit, yes. <laughs> uh, Sunblade. It's a Sunblade. Lightsaber. Radiant lightsaber. <laughs> but specifically, I, the thing I love about the Sunblade is it's not just a lightsaber. It's like a Jesus lightsaber. It's like praise the Lord because it's a radiant, holy powered lightsaber, which just adds yeah. to the fun of it. Ooh. Did you guys ever find it in Straw? Yes. Yes. Chris's character had it. Uh, oh, yeah, right. Twin Chris's got it. Yeah. yeah. 
Yes. Because I know, like, I joined, like, super late, so I'm like... I think I got the, the was it the Pendant of the Raven kind because I was the only fucking cleric. <laughs> you did, yes. You did, yes. You kind of got like, a constant. Oh. Well, to be fair, <laughs> Barrick was supposed to get supposed it, to and it. then Barrick got turned into meat paste. So yeah. I don't like you. You kind of got his hand me down. I don't like you bringing up my traumas. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce, Josh my name is Barrick Stoneheart, and this is Jackass. <laughs> I yeah. Uh, it was, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Barrick okay, Blackstone. Oh, shit. I didn't realize it's a plus two. Close. It is a plus two. Yeah. And yeah, plus two, 1d8. That's really good. It's a very oh, good weapon. Yeah. Like, mechanically, the Sunblade is good, and fictionally, the Sunblade is good. The Sunblade's fucking mm-hmm. sick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Potion of Dragon's Majesty. It's yeah, a potion. Yeah, dude. You turn into a dragon. Dragon cool. You get to play a dragon. That's every D and D player's classic dream of turning into a dragon. Mm-hmm. What more? What more need I say? You know, like <laughs> I like the idea of turning into a dragon. Also, uh, mm-hmm. it can be any dragon. There's no yeah. rules. Any dragon you want. Uh, and then it must be awful turning into one of the, the uh, mind flare dragons. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would imagine that is unpleasant. Yes. Uh, and then the awakened or awakened whatever uh, weapon. What is it? Awakened Dragon's Wrath weapon. Yeah, dude, we have the same item on here. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, so the awaken the like, I, I don't even know what to call them. The weapons that upgrade uh, from Fizzbands is like i mean i did i literally did upgrading weapons like upgrading transforming Mm -hmm. weapons in my game i think that's a very classic fantasy trope and the game didn't really have any kind of official support for it and now it does uh also i it occurs to me i put wakened when i meant to put ascendant oh ascendant's the highest ascendant's the highest i meant to put ascendant not wakened yeah. We'll fix that later. I mean, to be fair, so this whole shit started because, yeah, it was from older editions, but it was also in the, the Critical Role book, the Tal'Dorei one. And then when they were partnering with Wizards of the Coast for the uh, oh my God, Wild Mount book, they made more. Yes. And so you had official Wizards of the Coast uh, vestiges that could level yes. up and they're like fucking super legendary ads. So Wizards of the Coast were like, oh, let's keep doing that. But we can't like copy the critical. Well, we except copy, they haven't done it again since since Fizzbands. Yeah, yeah, because like, weird. The, the only downside to these dragon weapons, as cool as they are, they don't actually evolve with you. You have to they don't kill know. or defeat the kill dragon, dragon or barter with it and let the item steep in the treasure hoard of the dragon. Here's my thing, though. And then it absorbs I... It's cool. Fictionally, Kinda... it's I kind of like that better. I don't necessarily like the idea of just because my character leveled up mechanically, my weapon upgrades. That's not as fun. Mm. I prefer the fictional story of like my character plunged his weapon into the dragon's horde or my character had the giant smelt him a greater blade or, you know, we found this mystical ore that we forged into a cooler weapon. I'd rather the story implication of it. So I'm kind of okay with the fact they didn't tie it to levels don't really want it tied to levels personally Mm -hmm. i'd rather there be some story to it or if you are gonna you could do both right you could say at level five the player can now upgrade the weapon to upgrade the weapon they have to do x y or z that i'd be okay with that but yeah i don't know i just prefer i prefer the 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 fictional reasoning for upgrading or leveling up your weapon especially because even if you don't have a level gate aspect to it, it kind of has one built in already because in order to fight the dragon that's strong enough to upgrade the weapon, you have to be a certain level anyway. So like, it's already kind of built into that. So I'm fine with that. Uh, but yeah, all the ascendant, all the ascendant dragon weapons are sick. There's also ascendant dragon vessels and then the ascendant focus and the ascendant ornament so they gave it to like mm-hmm. so any class could potentially use it i think yeah. those are all like pretty fucking sick 
They all the have idea great just, abilities. Yeah, yeah, they all have cool abilities they add on. I just, the idea of just like upgrading this weapon, because I will say one thing that D&D is kind of bad at, and I, honestly, not just D&D, a lot of tabletop games are bad at, mm. is let's say you want to have a character who's got like their weapon, right? You want to have Bilbo's sting or whatever. You kind of can't because at some point you're going to have to get rid of it, you know, because you're going to like, let's say Bilbo's sting is a short sword. That's like a what? what's that one they put in? Ta- in was it in Tasha's the 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 moon, whatever weapon? moon glow oh, yeah, 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 the, yeah. Moon, the moonlight moon sickle weapon. moonlight weapons yeah there's no it's it's just it can be any weapon um oh. it's like let's say it's that right like sting is like oh it has this ability to glow whatever that's fine but if it's just a normal short sword with the ability to like glow near specific enemies eventually you're gonna get you know bilbo gets a, a vorpal sword he's gonna throw sting out and use the vorpal sword so having the ascendant dragon touch stuff makes it so that you can have your cool sword and then you plunge in the dragon sword and now it's better but it's the same sword so fictionally you can be like I wielded my father's blade and then I plunged my father's blade into the dragon's horde and it became blessed by the red dragon's flames you know so yeah more shit like that D&D please yes continue do I'm currently have uh, I got two players using two uh, different dragon weapons, uh, the, the wrath weapon and yeah, because I sick. think the scale ornament because they they kill they went into a dragon dungeon they found two hordes so I'm like all right you can you know player with the dragon sword you can upgrade yours and then the players I'd let them chose what one of the other three they picked mm. and I think the other fighter was like I want the scale one uh, and then he got dungeon so uh, and then he got yeah. dungeon by the deck of many things Lamau yeah. Hilarious. Oof. Hilarious. Oof. Oof. <laughs> um, uh, I, I'm 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 gonna keep it a buck on the Astromancy archive. It's it's a final, was, it's a Final Fantasy reference. Oh, it's, is yeah, it? It's literally it's, it. you're just it's yeah. a Final Fantasy reference. I because I was like, oh, because I know Tosh has made one book per Wizard School, yeah, so I'm a, like, oh, yeah. this is the divination one. It I'm is, like, yes. okay. It's a uh, it's pretty nice. So the way it's described, it is a brass disc of articulating concentric rings that unfold into an armillary sphere. I I don't I don't know how to explain an armillary sphere verbally, so I would just say look up what that means. But if you've played Final Fantasy fourteen, the thing that Astros use is an armillary sphere. So it's a bunch of concentric. Huh? They're called astrolobes. Yes, I know. Is that not what I? What did I say? No, you're, so I, you're just saying like that that thing that they use. I'm just oh, oh yes, the ast- yeah. yes the astromancy oh, astron- yeah 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 it is an astro yes the astrolobe that the uh, uh, that the what I just my brain just shut down that the what is the class Isaiah what the fuck did I just astrologian ast yes sorry the astrolobes <laughs> that the uh, astrologians <laughs> use is what you would call an armillary sphere. It, it it's a bunch of concentric rings that you've definitely seen one in your lifetime at some point. Yeah. You just didn't know what it was called because who the fuck knows what the hell that's called. The early astronomical device used to represent the yeah. great circles of the heavens, including most elaborate instruments, the horizon, Mediterranean equator, tropics, polar circles, the eclipse hoop. Now you yeah. might say, you might say, Josh, it's not a Final Fantasy 14 reference. It's a reference to actual astrology. Yeah, it is a reference to actual astrology, but the astrologians are references to actual astrology. So, like, it kind of (laughs) counts. You know. From a certain point of view. From a certain point of view. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. yeah. Well, it doesn't help that they literally say it floats in their hand and spins by itself. It floats in their hands and spins, which, yes. Also, they're astro. They're not astrolobes. They're astrolabes. Labes. Astrolabes. Astrolabes. Uh, it was one letter off. Yeah, it's just a cool Final Fantasy reference. It also does have some fun. Uh, mechanically, it's quite fun. It gives you a couple of fun spells, but it also gives you the ability to do like a mini portent where you can mm-hmm. uh, uh, or, or, or more accurate to say maybe a mini bane because you can no, add guidance. or guidance. Yeah, because you can add a D4 as a reaction to somebody else's roll, which is fun. Yeah, and then you can stack that with uh, guidance or blast or whatever. And uh, you could, yes. Yeah, 
so yeah, Astromancy Archive is cool. I also just recently finished a campaign where I gave my player an Astromancy Archive and he used it to great effect. So, you know, that makes, you know, nice. it adds to the fun. And then the last mm-hmm. one, the Devotee Sensor, I already mentioned. Um, yeah. And I guess the honorable mentions. Frostbrand is awesome. Just mechanically, it disappoints me. I just want it to do more mechanically. Yeah, that's really my big thing. I hate I hate that it does less damage. I hate that it does. It exudes less light than the flame tongue. And it has this expelling non-magical flames thing. But like, when are you going to use that? Like, give me the ability to like stab a bitch and freeze them in place or like restrict their movement or like create ice floors. Like, give me some give me some water bending or some shit, you know, like, ah. Mm-hmm. but I still like it. It's still cool. Um, yeah. Necklace of fireballs is kind of just for the memes because <laughs> you're just wearing tactical nukes around your neck. I like. It's fucking hilarious. Now, if you trip and fall while wearing a necklace of fire, yeah, you, you might die, but you know, whatever. Explode. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't know what the rules are there, but you're wearing, you are wearing C4 as jewelry. It's hilarious. It, you know, like, I don't know what else to say. And then, oh, and then, so the one really weird standout one is the lantern of revealing. I just <laughs> really love the idea of the lantern, like, or not the, the I just really love the aesthetic. The lantern of revealing is not very good. But the aesthetic of it is awesome because the idea of walking around with the spooky gothic lantern and you shine the light around and then you see all the invisible spirits wandering through the town that you couldn't normally see, like aesthetically awesome. It never gets fucking used in D&D and it, 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 it's rarely relevant. So that's why it's an honorable mention because it's not really that oh cool. God. But the what idea is the of it is cool. Yeah, the idea. Oh, what? yeah, and it has a weird eyeball on it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I just like the prem. I just like the concept. I like the aesthetic of. It. Yeah. It's very fair. I do like it, the lantern revealing is one of those things where you said it right. It's really unfortunate that it it's not will very almost good. never get used because yeah. it just sort of undoes all of the DM's hard work they put into their dungeon. Well, right? you know, honestly, well, it, even... I right, go for it. I think an item like the lantern of revealing. I almost feel like it shouldn't be a lant. It shouldn't be what? <laughs> I almost said it should be a lantern. I almost feel like it shouldn't be a magic item. It should be like it's a story item, right? Like the lantern of revealing. What you would do with it if you wanted to actually make it feel cool in your game, you could let it have the ability. Like at, for anyone who's curious, you open it up. It, sh- it sheds uh, a 30 foot radius of blight, uh, bright light and a 30 foot radius of dim light. Everything in the li- uh, invisible creatures in the light are visible as long as you keep the lantern on them. Mm. Uh, if you want to keep that as part of this, fine. But if you want to make this actually feel cool in your game, what you do is you give the players lantern revealing and you give it story powers Rather than worrying about mechanical powers, and I know that story powers isn't like a thing, but what I mean is, let's say the players walk into a town and you say to the players, okay, let's say there's, you know, it starts out, it's a mystery. No, but they can't see anybody. They're like, where's all the townspeople, blah, blah, blah. The players figure out the mystery. They get to Lantern. What you say to them is the Lantern is the only way you can see and communicate with all the people who are like who died in the town or or maybe not even died maybe the maybe the town are in this weird limbo dimension and you can only see and talk to them using the lantern so you have to wander around the town with the lantern trying to figure out who you're looking for and then maybe you could have a like a searching mini game where the players try to like shine the lantern in certain areas. Maybe there's a puzzle involved where they have to find certain symbols. And then if they shine it, you know, they go down the wrong alley and they shine the lantern on like a ghost or something. The ghost like physically materializes and they get into a fight. That's how you do something like a lantern of revealing rather than just making it a generic magic item that you give to your players because they're probably not going to use it. But if you make it part of a specific quest, that's why I mean by story powers. If you let it do more and you make it part of a very specific quest line, it can fulfill the aesthetic that it's trying to invoke. You know, does it require attunement? No, no. Oh, see, that makes it better. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you could just have it. Yeah. I I mean, honestly, I don't even think it's that 
bad. Like, it's just, it, like if you're doing a dungeon crawling campaign, like this is great. Go around, you find hidden yeah, passages. Yeah, that makes it better. Not a little bit. I mean, again, but I still. It's it not also gonna... gives the DM like more incentive to throw like some invisible, invisible enemies, more invisible things at your yes. players, because then like the one player with it can be like, yes. oh fuck, oh it's my job, and he, you know, he's pointing the lamp. But it's still not like not amazing but it, it's, it, it's helpful crawling around the dungeon and waving the lantern at the invisible enemies is is fun but it's not going to hit that aesthetic that i'm talking about you know what i mean it's not going to hit that feeling i'm talking about the vibe i'm talking about if you really want to invoke the vibe you have to make it a magic item that's like a key plot element to the to a, a specific quest or a specific adventure you know what i mean like the I know you haven't, Matt, and I don't know if you've seen any footage of it, Isaiah, but the new Lords of the Fallen game, there's a lantern you have that sees into the other dimension because the whole game exists on two oh, dimensions yeah. simultaneously. Yeah, and the yeah, lantern. Think of- yeah, so the lantern lets you see into the other dimension and there will be puzzles or enemies or platforms or items that are in one dimension and not the other. So the whole game, you're sort of you'll get to certain areas and you'll be like, huh, okay, I can't seem to progress. And you pull out your lantern and start like waving it around in the spooky darkness, trying to find if there's something hidden on the, in the other dimension. That's the kind of thing where I'm talking about, where if you want that kind of a feeling, you have to make the lantern more plot relevant and give it story superpowers. You know? I think I remember watching uh, and, the and, gameplay for that. And they're like, Oh, you know, you want to g- get past the poisonous swamp like yeah, all yeah. souls games we'll just go into the, into death the other dimension, dimension yeah like, <laughs> like yeah fuck you swamp. and then even <laughs> what you could do is after the players have i did not expect to spend this much time on this magic item after the players um do the quest where the lantern of revealing was like a a a plot element then you let them keep it and you just let it be its normal self that it is in the dmg right in the town it has this special power once they leave the town it's just its normal weapon So they have the memory and they still have it with them and it's still useful if it comes up. But it was really cool in that specific moment, that specific time during the campaign. Because, you know, honestly, that's what's going to happen with other than weapon with magic items that are weapons and shit. A lot of magic items, you're going to use them a few times and you're going to go. Oh, remember that one time we used the rod of the the um immovable rod for the thing and that did the thing and we ripped the dragon's intestines out or whatever like you know you're gonna do that kind of thing once or twice anyway so just tie it into the quest line or a quest line the lantern of revealing (laughs) Mm. yep yes that made it sound like it's not an honorable mention but i was just describing a lot of extra work you'd have to do to make the magic item cool so you know Mm. so yeah yeah, sometimes it's like that. Yes. There's a lot of shit like that in D&D where I see like magic items or monsters or specific abilities or I'm like, oh, you could. I see what they're going for there here, but because they need to make the game kind of generic and, and sort of a one size fits all, they can't really hone in the specific vibe that they're trying to invoke. So they have to genericize it a little bit. There's all sorts of shit like that in the game. Particularly with monsters. It happens all the time with mod. Like, there will be monster stat blocks where I'm like, oh, you could definitely make a whole cool, interesting quest line out of this, but you're going to have to do a little extra work to make it really work because the default stat block is intentionally more generic than it would be otherwise. Yeah. All right. Who's next? Uh, I will see. All right. I guess uh, Isaiah, evens or odds? Uh, I'll do evens. Even these balls. It is a two, so uh, I guess. Uh, Gosh, you're a bitch for that. All right, so I guess yeah, I'll I mean, go because uh, you as, or you want to go. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll do you it. pick. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So as as you can see uh, on my list that I have posted. Uh huh. I like you had to specify. Uh huh. Uh huh. What? Specify what now? Uh, My list was yeah. here the whole time. <laughs> yeah, so you'll, you'll notice a, a theme with mine. Um, most of them start with the letter A. I don't know what that is. Um, yeah, I was about to <laughs> say. <Yeah>. You gotta... <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that worked out that way. Uh, although most, all of my honorable mentions, none of my honorable mentions start with the letter A, so fuck me, I guess. <laughs> uh, I realize now I have way more honorable mentions you than do. everyone else. You do. I was about to say, I mean, it's, it's all pretty good. I mean, do you... 
can quickly just mention one or two of them or all. Yeah. Them, yeah. So uh, I mean, I mean, no, whoa, 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 three by three first, sir. OK, all right. So we start off our, our three by three with one of my favorite things in all of D&D that I finally, finally fucking got to use. And it's adamantine armor, baby. It's so good. I love adamantine armor so much. Just mm-hmm. the idea of this like polished, you know, like a uh, 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 black tinted armor, like either like, per- like I always think of it like a uh, uh, like Renaissance Gothic armor with all the panels and plates and super articulate. It just it's so dope. And the fact that you just cannot get crit while you're in it, right? It just negates critical hits. You feel like a god. Like, ah, yes, he rolled a crit. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't fucking matter. And you're there like, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I, I always thought Animan Time was like space rock or something. It's not but like no, space rock for the forgotten rooms. Deep rock. It's deep rock. Yeah, deep, but it's deep, deep rock. Like, and then like Baldur's Gate, it was like bright blue. And I'm like, what the fuck? It was very blue in Baldur's Gate. Yeah, I thought that was a little odd. The color choice. Like, really? My immersion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like a bright. It's like a shiny blue kind of steely it, look. It looks cool, but it's also like not what I had in mind. Not what you would expect. Yeah, wait, what yeah. the fuck? Wait, but we have like specific art for adamantine armor. It's what the drow use. The drow use adamantine. No, they don't. No. Um, drow. Well, I guess the drow use know, special magical drow leather. Yeah, drow use magical drow leather and or it'll have like because they even mentioned the monster manual where they'll have like you know, you can give a priestess of Wolf uh, a plus two, I think, like, you know, fucking breastplate Wait, or whatever. What? No, it, it says in the monster manual, drow, drow create weapons and armor out of adamant. Where? In the fifth edition monster manual. Wait, where? I don't know, wherever the fuck the page on drow are. <laughs> uh, bro. <laughs> There's news to me. I was going to say, as far as I'm aware, they just wear fancy magical drow leather. I mean, if anyone would have adamantine, it would It'd be the fucking drow. It'd be or the drow of the Durgar. Dur- Durgar, yeah. I mean, I guess, it's but also, it's just, also most it's of the art... representing their stats. Which is not, really no. weird. Also, yeah. most of the art, the drow are wearing um, leather, not, not, not like armor. Like the bits of art we do have of them, they're not wearing metal. So I don't think we have any official... As far as I'm aware, we have no official 5e art of what... Uh, adamantine armor looks like. Plus, plus it would be in their, I be sure. in their Hold stat on. blocks. Like if they were like, you can't crit this monster, which that'd it's be definitely not in their stat blocks. Be, and nothing. Be, I would love that. Other than maybe, just, like, maybe you around, could like, say no. the, the the Drow Inquisitor in that stat block is wearing adamantine armor. Maybe, but hmm. I don't. That's that feels like a stretch. Anyways, adamantine cool. Yes, the adamantine armor is awesome. It has an awesome like uh, sort of flavor to it of this unbreakable, you know, stalwart armor that never fails. The only way to get through it is to get through the plates in said armor because you're never going to sunder it. It's just a cool idea. Uh, and when you when you mix that up with an armor artificer warforged, you just become an unstoppable wall uh, of force, and uh, it's awesome. I love it. Mm-hmm. I do feel like there should be a little bit of a nerf to the no crits thing. Like the fact that it's just blanket no crits feels a little too good. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, so I now mean, you get into that issue of is it too good for an uncommon item? Yes. Yeah, one hundred percent. But like, if you only say, let one player grab it, oh no, then... no, please, no, you're good, you're good. No, I was gonna say if you only let one player grab it, then you know, no <laughs> my man, you just interrupted him to tell him you're not interrupting him. Oh shit! I thought he was talking to you. I'm sorry. No, he was talking to what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, that, that I, I bad. accidentally interrupted bad. him, and then he stopped talking, and I said, "My bad." And please then, continue. No, no, but Matt was halfway through the sentence that Isaiah goes, "No, no, you're good. You're good. You." you, 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 you. <laughs> Cacophony. We're professionals here, fellas. I was gonna say, just a cacophony of stupid <laughs> events. That I'm just trying happened. to be polite, motherfucker. It did I'm not sorry, work. Same. Um, Mission failed. <laughs> Both our bads. We we'll got them next time. <laughs> but, point being, I feel like there should maybe be like a check or something, or maybe it can d- negate crits a certain number of times per day or something. Like I don't know. I feel like it's maybe a little too much to just be like blanket no crits at all. But maybe that's just I feel me. Like it, 
No, I mean, if, if you, if, I think if you turn it into a very rare item, then I think it's perfectly fine as it is. As an uncommon, yeah, fair enough. I don't feel like it is. I, I, don't think, I don't even think it. Ha- I don't even really care about the rarity because even late game, it still just feels. Even if it's like legendary and you could only get a late game, it, it still just feels kind of not fun and annoying to just be like blanket, no crits allowed. Like it's just an automatic no button, which is like not that not that interesting. Like hmm. it should still be good. Obviously, I'm not saying it should be like shitty, but I feel like you should be able to maybe whittle it down at some point or whittle the character down, really, no, less so that the ar- you're whittling the armor down. Especially because D and D characters are getting hit with a lot of attacks, where like your big fancy armor wouldn't necessarily matter, you know? Like, uh, yeah. My my only counter to that is it, it does if the armor is, you know, magical and. But it doesn't if you're getting breathed on by dragon fire, you know? Like like why can't yeah, a dragon can't crit on that? Okay, bad example, but you know what I mean, like. And also, just because the armor is magical, so are all, so are most of the attacks late game too. So, like, I don't—is that even an argument? You know? Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel like it is, because you could make the argument of like, well, the super powerful magical attack should be able to break the armor, and you go, well, the armor's magical, and you're like, yeah, but so are the attack. Like, yeah, you got a lot of kind of, you got a lot of circular logic there. I mean, I, I think if if you have adamantine armor that says it negates like heavy damage from all attacks. And then magical weapons do magical damage. Unless it says this sun, this thing counters adamantine. I think it's fair to say that it still goes through because it's an absolute. Yeah, I understand. And pretty, pretty I solid understand it is right. currently an absolute. I'm saying it shouldn't be a hundred percent absolute. That was that was that was that was my whole point. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like there's like there's an argument to be made about if you remove the absolute out of that you remove the absolute out of things like uh the uh what is it? holy i was almost said divine avenger the holy avenger holy avenger is pretty good too. <laughs> what? what i just matt holy avenger cool yes thank you Matt. Yeah. thank you for your yeah. your colorful commentary on that one that's what i'm here for i don't know what is even is the absolute on the, i don't even know what you're referring to what part well, the, the fact that the Holy Avenger just does a crap ton extra damage and even more damage when it crits. Well, it does it just does extra radiant? How does that compare to crit immunity? What? Because it's another absolute ability that. Yeah, but the absolute damage is not the same thing. You think so? I, I don't know about that. Get to the rest of your fucking grid. All right, we're going number nowhere. two. I have, I have the alchemy jug. Hey, it's one of the dude. funniest items in the game. <laughs> it's just a meme item, uh, and it's also hilariously very useful if oh, in yeah. the right slash devious hands. Uh, just like making what is it like a couple tablespoons of poison, spiking mm-hmm. people's drinks and marking them that way, or just making mayonnaise. It's like the grossest shit. Remember we put we tried putting fire out with mayonnaise in the fucking White Plume Mountain dungeon. I don't <laughs> no. Uh, it's because Knack brought the fucking our alchemy I, jug I, as a I, meme. I remember that part. I don't remember yeah, trying it's, to it's, put a fire out with mayonnaise though. It's a right oh, wait a minute. We fought Snarla. <laughs> Never mind. Yes, in the spinning tube. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No. I, yeah. 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 <laughs> Sam was just like, "Can you fucking imagine what burning <laughs> mayonnaise smells like?" I believe. I believe we did oh. put the fire out with mayonnaise. No, we did. It's just. So <laughs> I don't think we tried. I think we, we did. I mean, uh, yeah. Ugh. You, uh, Isaiah, have you seen the video with Chris Perkins and Jeremy Crawford talking about, like, I guess originally in the 5e, like, Dungeon Master's Guide, like, or I guess in the 4th edition one, mayonnaise wasn't on the alchemy jug or ketchup or whatever else they were mustard. I, I heard honey. something about this. Yeah. So they were like talking to like, well, what else can it make? It can make any liquid. And then I think one of them was like, yeah, like mayonnaise. Oh, that's horrifying. Let's put it in the book. <laughs> so I think, here's my thing. I think the important, got me fucked up. the important note is that it's eight or sorry, that it's two gallons of mayonnaise. Yeah, hey, dude, two gallons. Sell it. Obscene <laughs> amount of mayonnaise. Also, 
I, you, I, <laughs> mayonnaise is very, very specific that you need to keep it cold. Uh huh. So, <laughs> because it's got eggs in it. Yeah. Most places mm. in Faerun do not have the means to keep mayonnaise cold. No. So is mayonnaise just a magical substance that was reverse engineered once they have ice boxes? You always want Billy the Wizard to show up at the picnic because he always brings the alchemy jug full of mayonnaise. And you're like, all right, all that mayonnaise is going by the end of the picnic. Does the, may does the alchemy jug keep the mayonnaise cold? Probably not, not, but it, I'm assuming it spawns <laughs> it in good condition, right? It doesn't spawn the mayonnaise rotten. But how long does how long does the mayonnaise, like how much time you got on that mayonnaise? Also, does it Who knows? Sp if it spawns in like room temperature, mayonnaise room temperature is kind of gross, even if it's not rotten. Like, true, it is kind of gross. I mean, when mayonnaise, it's room temperature. mayonnaise is gross, period. But it, still, well, see, so like uh, mayonnaise on the Sword Coast because it's tropical. You probably got a couple of hours, right? You, you got like a you got like a grilling afternoon to keep that mayonnaise yeah, soft. <laughs> that's what I mean. But like, if you're in the middle of Chult, you got like two hours tops. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be a little I'd be a little sus about it after 45 minutes. I'm gonna keep it. Uh, having mayonnaise in a fucking jungle like <laughs> I have so many questions now about the mayonnaise. Like there's so many thoughts going through my head about this mayonnaise now. I, don't I know. Even... This is why I love this item. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like do like. And then let's say you do have the ice boxes, so you want to store the mayonnaise. But you gotta get it out of the yeah. jug into jars, jars or something. Like, do they have the jars? Put it in the cooler? Or are you just <laughs> yeah? Like, are you just gonna put it in the cooler? <laughs> <laughs> you just pour it in a cooler. So I guess right. There's a bunch of ice cubes in there. Nothing bad with that. Just it's pour also the mayonnaise kind of, it's, over it's the cubes too, because it doesn't go away magically if you spawn that mayonnaise and leave it's just it there. there. Yeah. It's, it's there. just there. It's just there. <laughs> Can you imagine you just pull a prank on a dragon? You just slowly fill their horde with mayonnaise. mayonnaise. <laughs> the dragon's just like, what the fuck? Where is it coming from? What's who, this man? Who is doing this? <laughs> let it let it be you know, and I also almost put the alchemy jug on my list. Mm, right. Good, 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 good. Uh, my third item needs no real introduction. Ugh. It is arguably one of the best items in D&D. &D. The bag of holding, the great murderer. It is yep. perfect. I love it so much. It's got a funny face <laughs> and you can use it to kill people. And I've done that a lot. <laughs> the bag of holding almost feels like a cop out answer. Look, it's, nah, it's, 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 it's low hanging fruit. No, it's, it like, look, the, it's, it's like the cloak of protection. It's classic. I mean, it That's is. Classic. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying it just the, the bag of holding would not be as high on my list. If it didn't have all of those rules about being able to breathe in it, I'm going to be so honest. Oh, with oh you. <laughs> so it's just specifically because you can commit murder with it. Well, it's it just the idea of, of pulling off the bagging where you're like, we can't kill whatever the fuck we're about to fight. Hold on. Let's stuff them in a leather sack and suffocate them to death. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> so when you do that, the hags an old bone grinder, like here's the thing. Could they potentially rip through a, a tanned leather bag with their bare hands? Yes. Yes. But it's very unlikely. <laughs> it's very hard to rip leather in half. Mm. Knife. Uh, Another story. The fact that you can also use it as an astral hand grenade. Pretty great. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I do want to do that really bad in the game, but I don't know when opportunity will ever present itself. Yeah, no, like you just want to clear a final boss. Someone just yeet the bag of holding at it and have the just have the ranger ready in action with their fucking bow and hit that bitch the second it paps the bad guy in the face. That dude is gone. Mm -hmm. He is somewhere. And if he don't have if he don't got any homies that have um fucking plane shift, he's gonna get murked by an astral dreadnought at some point. Mm -hmm. You can imagine Darkamond got Lord pulled into the astral sea and he's just like Fuck, what do I do now? <laughs> what does that sound? And he just turns around, it's a nasty giant crab thing. He's there just like, oh fuck. Nasty mm -hmm. giant crab thing that's drooling all over the place and shit. Yeah. If he's lucky, he gets donjoned. If he's not, he just gets moidled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I love that one. Um, the next one is my version of the Astromancy Archive, or my, my favorite of the like wizard books, uh, equal to the Astromancy Archive which is the Atlas of Endless Horizons from Tashin's College or everything. Um, this is the Conjuration is, book, of course. <laughs> yes, because Conjuration is my favorite wizard school. Mm -hmm. 
it just lets you teleport. It's got a bunch of cool spells in it. Um, it's got like Word of Recall, which honestly one of the most underrated teleport spells. Uh, yeah. What else? I'm trying to think. Uh, oh, yeah, you can replace spells in it, which is cool. So like if you're like, oh, no, you know, we didn't prepare teleportation circle today. You can actually use it to prepare that spell and cycle it out with a spell you have. It also lets you, if you are hit, teleport up to 10 feet away. So you can just misty step and you're gone uh, and yeah. you don't end up getting hit. Beautiful, beautiful misty step. Yeah. Yes. I think I think all of these uh, the Tasha wizard books have the ability to like swap out a, a wizard spell, which is it's so helpful. It's so fucking nice, dude. Right. It really does make your life easier. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't seen the art for it either, it's described as this like massive royal blue covered books with all these like uh, like a uh, 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 cartographer symbols all over the front and the pages themselves are like stars and shit it's awesome yeah i'm looking at the actual uh the art for it too very nice mm. i'm surprised not every book has also art. yeah most of them didn't get art. you that think was, with uh, all the people complaining to wizards of the coast they're like with uh when toma foes came out and they're like listen some of these monsters don't have art what the shit and then they fix that with the uh, uh, Morton Kane's planar book and yeah. every single monster had art. And it's like, all right, like, nice. Now let's just do that with magic items. I like how you said Morton Kane's planar book. The word planar. I forgot what it's fucking called. <laughs> planar's not even in there once. <laughs> it's the book of Morton Kane presents monsters of the monsters of the multiverse. I was close. I got one. I got one word, right? No, you didn't. Right? You said planer. I said multi. I said Morton Cannon. OK, you said Morton Cannon. Sure. <laughs> I, 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 I got the lowest possible denominator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got the easiest one. Uh, Let's see what else? Man, he only has two books. Listen, leave him alone. <laughs> well, you know, if him, uh, him, Volo and Zan uh, not Xanathar and uh, 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 Elminster weren't constantly trying to outplay oh. each other. Slash, if Zana, uh, if Morden Kane would stop getting his ass kicked at chess by uh, Tasha, maybe he could write more books. You know? Yeah. This is all. This is all actual D and D lore. Morden Kane and uh, Volo and Elminster have like a prank off that they just will not let go. And uh, yeah, he likes to play a lot of chess with Eagle Liv slash Tasha and just loses all hmm. the time. That feels like a really unfair situation for Volo. You'd think. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, he's just a dude. Just a guy. He's just a bard. Who might be immortal. Yeah. No, he's he's an immortal bard with the magic initiate feed. What level is he? How many levels does he have? None. I think he has a cannon level. He has to have some. Because well, he's, yep. well, he's an old-fashioned character. They always had, like, this uh, character is the equivalent of a level. Stats, it's literally a common commoner with the magic initiate feed. What the fuck? I'm yeah. going to look this up. I'm not even It's... it's <laughs> But he wait, has wait, like press digitation and shit. And that's is, it. is he a bard? I don't think he's like yeah. Like I know he's like fictionally a bard, but I don't think he's mechanically a bard. No, he's not mechanically. Again, he, commoner. Yeah, he's just dude McGuy in five e. Right. Yeah, he's just dude. Before I, I he was think like he might have no. He might have been in older editions, but five e they're like now nah, let's just bring him back down to earth. But he's also like, just, he's still just questionably immortal, maybe, or something. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, no. Uh, even... Volo is a level one wizard in 5e. Oh, okay. So he's Says a who, where, right. what? On the Forgotten Realms wiki. No, I guess additional statistics. Got, Chaotic got, good, got, challenge so rating one fourth. His, his, his stat in uh, Tomb of Annihilation, because he shows up in there. And I think he also shows up in Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Yeah, first level wizard. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah, but say the wiki's very rarely wrong. I don't know about that statement, but uh, he's, no, 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 he's like not, the, every not the D and D skill, fan wiki. though. God Wait, damn. but but stat blocks don't get class levels in five E. Yeah, they do. Right, this is depending off on like this is off topic, caster. so I don't care enough to look down, look into this. There you go. Here's just that. Anyways, yeah, I, um, yeah. I hate this name is Volo Thamp. Volo Thamp. <laughs> yes, follow the Uber. get arm. Uh, my number number five item is the Azure Edge. 
because it's yeah. awesome and it has an awesome name and it's got some really sick abilities even though they're very rarely going to be used in the actual game um mm-hmm. it's yeah it's basically a legendary battle axe that has a bunch of cool abilities it's kind of like a, a mjolnir where you can throw it and then it comes back to you uh it glows it's basically sentient and just wants to clap everything's cheeks it just wants to kick the shit out of everything that's non-lawful and i kind of love that <laughs> it goes through the shield spell yeah it just ignores the shield spell that is so cool uh that's crazy in, in, yeah. like flavor like the fact that you could fight i don't know uh uh so vecna n- not yeah like vecna and he's like haha shield and it just like hits the the, the <laughs> no force you. field whatever you want to call it <laughs> And just splits it in half, and then Vecna has the the <laughs> nani face before yeah. he gets yoked. Mm. It's so cool. Um, in the campaign we just finished with Josh, I we got items that had the abilities of like uh, magic items we got to choose. So my character mm-hmm. had a spear mounted to his forearm because he's a warforge, so it worked kind of like a pile bunker that had this ability. And I never got to use the breaking through shields thing, but I wanted to so bad. It, like the idea of character punching the shield and the pile bunker deploys, cranks back and punches through the shield would have been so cool. Damn, Josh, you didn't give the big bad evil a fucking shield spell? The shield Fine. spell? No, Tiamat didn't have. Why not? Make no, her thank AC God 30. Tiamat didn't have the fucking shield spell. Because <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, would have meant her... I would have been the only How... one hitting her. Make her shield, How make her AC 28. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, no, I would have been the only one to actually hit her, and it's not because I would have rolled high enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's cool. I don't know the history, because uh, I know all these characters are, like, water deep. You know, there, there's been tons of books in, about them in the past, bunch of adventures. I don't know anything about uh, Meloon War Dragon, uh, but he's basically, like, for 5e, he's just a champion, like, sap block with this fucking legendary axe. Do we actually have, have Art of the Azure Edge? I, I, I always I imagine it in Probably. my head looking like... um. Oh, God. He's a character in Fire Emblem named Raven. Uh, and he's like a, a... He's not... He used to be a lord. He was disgraced. And he has this, like, legendary axe. It's the strongest axe in Blazing Sword. It's actually stronger than the Divine Weapon Armads, which the main character Hector uses. Uh, it's awesome. Nerd shit. So, Don't worry about yeah. it. Mm. Uh, that what it looks like now. Uh, apparently, in older editions, I guess now it's it's blue. Everything blue. It's blue. It's blue. Is that magic? It's probably blue. It's blue. Is that blue? I found this blue shirt. Is it magic? It probably is. It's blue. It do be blue. <laughs> It'll be blue, so it's probably. Yeah, that's not my new head cannon. Anytime it's something's blue, it's, <laughs> it's right, magic. magic. <laughs> it's right. That's fair. I like that head cannon. <laughs> I still, I still, I'm, I'm sad. I'm no longer running Mad Mage because I told all my players, I'm like, I was gonna do the dickhead DM thing and be like, well, yeah, ancient wizards and stuff of the past, only currency they used was Electrum. I was just like, no, oh god, and just like all the money, all the gold they found, <laughs> was just all in Electrum pieces. I love that. That's fantastic. It's so funny. Oh, yeah. All right, get, yeah. get through this list here. Come on. All right, fine, fine, fine. Uh, up next, we have the arcane propulsion arm. You're just you just become Venom Snake. You just have <laughs> a cool yeah. robot arm that you can pull off a rocket punch with. It's really That's fun that you can pull off a rocket punch with. It. Now, is it is it only for Warforge or is it for Warforge and Prosthetic limbs, I forgot. It's for anybody. It's literally oh, okay. anyone. It's just for places. No, it acts hand. as a prosthetic limb. If you're not a Warforged, if you are a Warforged, presumably you just, you know, screw your arm off and then pop mm. this one on. Uh, you know, TIG weld a few spots and you're good. Uh, it's just really cool. It's it's the kind of stuff that I like to see um, when, like, like to have a character who has been maimed at level, you know, maybe not level one, if you start off at level five, because it's a rare item, very rare item. It's not common or uncommon. Just to be like, you know, my character's been through some shit. They're like a, a veteran at this point, and they've got the scars to prove it. I love that trope. Like the battle-hardened warrior. Yeah. And once again, I can't stress this enough. Rocket punch. Rocket punch? Yeah, it's so good. 
Uh, up next, I have Wave, the, uh, hey. <laughs> the trident from the DMG, the artifact weapon. It's I It probably wasn't meant to be a meme weapon, right? It was almost certainly supposed to just be this really cool, powerful item that makes you feel like a badass. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. For it's us, however, weapon. it became a meme weapon. It's yeah. a meme weapon. Uh, it's the fact that it functions as a trident. I mean, it, you're supposed to be Aquaman, right? Like that's the that's the conceit because you can talk to fish. It always lets you know if you're going to be attacked. Uh, you can breathe underwater while you have it. But the thing, the thing that I love, is the cube of force ability. <laughs> See, because you just become fucking Tigtone and scream no sun and become an in indestructible ball of nature. <laughs> and or if you're fighting someone, you know like Vecna and you just look at them and scream no sun and then you stick them in the cube of force and they're fucked. They can't do anything. They can't go anywhere. You can't really do anything to them. So you're both just looking at each other like you're a fucking idiot and me going, no, I know. I understand. This is a bad idea. <laughs> you just you just look at each other and throw each other bird and just kind of that's it. Yeah, it's like you can't keep me in forever. True, but I can recast this. You would. <laughs> I would. You're going to be here ever so fuck you. God damn it. He's you know what I mean? Like, God damn it, he's right. <laughs> you can't technically do this forever, son of a. <laughs> yeah, the, needless to say, this uh, this item got a lot of use when we played. It, it really yeah. did. I just remember the one room where, like, the air elemental, and it's like, well, if we like cube the room and like crush all the areas, like, there's no air for the air elemental to escape from that. So he's just like pancakes i'm like i oh yeah, yeah the air elemental yeah yeah, yeah. i remember yeah, yeah, we were yeah. all just sitting there like <laughs> everyone just sat there happens? like i don't there's, it's like so like the dungeon the walls behind you are like solid brick there's like no yeah right like where the fuck is he gonna go it's a volcano and it's like yeah i i, I fucking guess <laughs> we all just kind of sat there like <laughs> i don't know what happens there's <laughs> there's no guidance on this scenario <laughs> okay then <laughs> You're pretty much like, do, do they just all die? And you're like, I yes. I think I yes? was like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> oh, I, I knew you hmm. were going to put this next one. Of course. I look, it's me, right? It has to be. I, yeah. yeah. Uh, if I could have a number one on this list, it would be oh. the mighty servant of Luko from Tasha's Cauldron, Tasha's Cauldron of everything. Yeah. Why? The, I think the, it's pretty simple. It's a, it's a mech suit. Mech suit it's a, just a yeah. mech suit. Also, that you can pilot. Bro. The rules for this thing are fucking dense. It's so it's, thick. There's yeah. so much shit. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. Yeah, so of uh, among other things, the Mighty Servant of Luko has rules for self-destructing, how much damage it does on its attacks, the fact that there's like a sentient spirit in it that's basically an evil AI constantly trying to take control of it slash you, Called the and ghost it will the break free sometimes. Yeah. Yep. It just it's so cool. I love this thing so much. I wish one day to be allowed to pilot this thing. It would be so sick. Um, it's an artifact. Magic. It is, item. Yeah. yeah. So I, you know, I don't even know. I don't even honestly artifacts are one of those things I look at in this game and I'm like, when and how am I supposed to even use these? Yeah. Like in what I what just, scenario do these make sense on top of all the other potential magic items your players may already have? Yeah, like, oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's got to be one of those story based things. It's like, here you I go. I mean, obviously, this is... yeah, of course. Yeah. But still, oh. Jeremiah, the Warforge, now is your time. Go Omega mode. Finally. Well, no, I mean, it'd be getting into the like, it's literally a mech suit. You get into it. Yeah. Well, it doesn't even need to be a Warforge or anything. You just fucking climb in that big boy. Well, no, I'm just saying the Warforge goes in and now it's like this is his full full power mode this is his full his body. <laughs> yeah it becomes his body yeah uh one of my favorite little things is while you are attuning to it right because it takes two hours to attune to Jesus. Uh, there's a 25 percent chance that the thing just punches the nearest person <laughs> oh. that's not inside of it <laughs> it just does the hulk thing in avengers <laughs> and it does a lot of damage yeah i like how it has a separate stat block for it too Say, yeah, uh, it, 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 it hits with a destructive fist, which does 4d12 plus 10 force damage. Oh my god. If it's an object, it takes triple damage. Oh. 
Nice. 12 D12 plus 30 damage. Siege plus Omega. I love this thing. Like I said, I, I wish one day to pilot the mighty servant of Lugo uh, and just oh have God. a good old time it in my Mecha Wonderland. 310 hit points. It is such a chunky boy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not forget the 22 AC. Yeah. I don't even know how I would like, even if I wanted to use this, I don't know how I would. I think that's just immune to bludgeoning damage too. Well, like yep. on top of all the other magical damages. It's immune to most damage. It's immune to a lot of Because it's immune damage. to acid, bludgeoning, cold, fire, lightning, necrotic, poison, psychic, and radiant damage. Which I think literally just leave Leaves thunder force damage. and thunder. Force, yeah. thunder, piercing and slashing. Well, yeah, and it's resistant to piercing and slashing, so yeah. it's like... It's like game. Yeah, and that's just what, flat resistance. That's, there's no caveats to that. Like honestly, no, you could just like, use this thing as a boss. Yeah. You could, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, it doesn't have any proficiency, like CR or like proficiency, but like just it's fucking nuts. What a ridiculous magic! I don't know if I've ever looked at it that closely. So. Cool. <laughs> 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 uh, my last one is, is actually a, a relatively simple one in comparison to the Mighty Servant of Luko. Uh, it's the Ruby of the War Mage. I love yeah, this little dude. Uh, it great. can turn any weapon, uh, magical or non-magical, into a casting focus. You just pop it on that motherfucker, give it an hour or two into it, and now whatever you're holding, that's a spell casting focus. That's mm -hmm. super cool. And it lets you, for example, if you wanted to play like a blade singer who's dual wielding rapiers, you can do that. Obviously, you're going to need to do it as well, but you can still do it, and it's awesome. Yeah. I've got nothing else really to say about it. It just turns you into a red mage. Red mages are cool. It does just turn you into a red mage. It's, it's a fun item. I, I also yeah. feel like it's a reasonably easy item to just toss a player at the beginning of the game and say, fuck it. Yep. Yeah, yeah especially sure. if they're like struggling where it's like, uh, I gave it to one of my ranger, actually my ranger at low level, and I, he's level nine. He's still using it. Yeah, well, yeah, because it's like, I want to be an Eldritch Knight, but I want to have a fucking shield, you know, You're like, all right. Yeah, it is technically a little bit of a buff to Eldritch Knight to like allow it, you know, to allow mm -hmm. them to start with it. But it's like a it's like a manageable buff. Yeah, yeah. well, it's also it's a common magic item, too, right? So it's yeah. like 50 gold, pieces, 50 gold. Like. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, the problem wouldn't be so much the price. It would be the could your characters setting type question. Yeah, well, I, I just meant like it's it's like round about 50 gold for a common magic item, which is like you could potentially start with it at level one if you, you know, didn't pick any armor and only took like a rape here and just saved yeah, all the yeah. rest of your money for this one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, true. Uh, DM, I want to start off selling all my starting equipment so I can buy a Ruby of the War Mage. OK, um, sure. You are a naked Elders Knight with a Ruby of the War Mage and a rapier. Good luck. Nice. <laughs> uh, as for some honorable mentions, uh, the headband of intellect. I, I feel like that doesn't mm -hmm. really need. It's just really funny. Put, just put a headband mean. on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You're just you're just Ryu from Streets uh, <laughs> with a yeah. PhD. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, robe of, the robe of useful items is a very fun role play slash mechanical tool. It just gives it's you so a lot good. of random shit. That's really funny. Like there's two mastiffs in the robe yeah, <laughs> yes i, sh I should have had this on my list to be honest too it's, it's so good yeah i had one of these in one campaign and i was like i just want them to be tibetan mastiffs the biggest of them mm. it's the biggest fluffiest murder machines uh <laughs> elemental gems i mean I, I love conjuration so being able to summon a creature without burning a spell slot it's got really cool flavor to like hold the gem and crush it in your hand and throw it up in the air and a portal drops you're just it's awesome mm -hmm. sick uh the cloak of billowing is it i think it's just the best common item in the game is it it's uh, yeah I, it? I have it in my list it's great yeah flavor wise it's the best common item like the dread helm is really cool because you turn into skull knight but the fact that you could be anywhere and be like i will save you and you can be in a cave and the shit is just mm -hmm. magically billowing in the wind and everyone's like or you want to be intimidating like the uh the bad guy from who framed roger rabbit Cloak is always yeah. yellowing every single yeah. scene he's in. <laughs> Looking like a hell uh, The weapon of certain. Yeah, that too. 
Uh, the weapon of certain death is really cool. It has some sick like flavor to it. If you wanted to a player, if you're, you have a bad guy that wants to be like, you know, Jason Voorhees or or Michael Myers. The fact that if you get hit with this weapon, you cannot heal by any means until the start of the attacker's next turn is so crazy. It's a good way of like really mitigating boss fights. If they're like, oh, the players like I deal a bunch of damage and then the player just casts heal. Well, you can have that one boss fight where that shit just don't matter. <laughs> Especially if the boss has more than one attack around. Yeah, sure. Uh, the last one is the Eyes of Charming, and this is a reference to <laughs> my second ever campaign, the Fire Emblem campaign, where my character had a monocle that had the effective abilities of the Eyes of Charming, uh, and then uh, he found another because they're they're blue for anyone. They look like they're made of sapphires. And I made the monocle out of a sapphire. I found another one that towards the end of the game and I made the actual eyes of charming, except they had a see invisibility on it. A little fun feature that Ant just threw in there uh, on top of other things. <laughs> Some other stupid shit. Uh, the joke was is that my character used it for his gaydar uh, mm-hmm. because yeah, my character Cyrus was just like hashtag Blaine from Predator, the the pansexual Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> uh, okay, nice. Okay, <laughs> you never seen that 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 bit? I've never. I'm not seen gonna that say movie, the really so. Oh, you should. Well, they they, they say some not good words before that yes, line. I but know. He goes, you know, this stuff will make you a goddamn sexual Tyrannosaurus. It's the funniest line. Is uh, I I don't want Jesse Ventura saying that anywhere, even remotely near me. I'm just going to be very uncomfortable and kind of wish he hadn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's all mine. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, yeah, much. I don't think I have any questions or anything. Yeah, I think you pretty much answered. I I'm trying to think if any of these surprised me, but I don't think they did. No, I don't think they should. They're very yeah. no. shit. My my little like avatar that I use right now has blue sunglasses in reference to the eyes of charming. I, the eyes of charming nice. might have been the only one I wouldn't have guessed, just because it's kind of innocuous. Mm-hmm. But like, how the fuck would I have guessed it? But yeah, the rest of them, I'm like, yeah, that checks out. Mm-hmm. That checks. Out. <laughs> All right, we're done anyway. Uh, good night, right, y'all. Talk to you listening. later. Uh, see you next week. Uh, uh, Matt doesn't get opinions. We don't care about Matt's opinions here. Pepe, Pepe hands. Pepe hands. <laughs> That's like Sedge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I guess you can give yours. That's right. Oh, good. I'm the captain now. All right. Let's let's instead uh, instead of how Isaiah did it, let's uh, go down the whole list and then go back to the top. Let rattle them off real quick. Okay. Uh, so we got here. I'm gonna go at you. Oh, so we got the deck of many things, hand of Vecna, staff of defense, cloak of billowing, teeth of uh, Dalvernar. Yep. Uh, dragon's wrath weapon, which you had in your list, uh, and actually cloak of billowing Isaiah had in his honorable mentions. Uh, the Strixhaven primers, which technically are five magical items, so. But they they all basically do the same thing, so I'm just counting as one item. Um, Uncommon Glimmer Weave from Eberron, and uh, newest item is the Worm Reavers Gauntlets from Bigby's uh, Glory of the Giants. I have no idea what those do. So uh, uh, I'll I'll just start off real quick with Deck of Many Things. We did a whole fucking episode on it. No, we didn't. Oh, we didn't do that yet? No. Oh, I thought we did for some reason. Oh, shit. I'm... Okay, well, we've talked about it a fuck ton we on the show. We talked about I'll it. Let, uh, I'll just, just to quickly skim over it, magical deck of cards, you pull a card, uh, some shit happens. Wild shit happens. Wacky woohoo chaos times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and like uh, I think we said on the podcast, give it to your, throw it in your game. It's not as game destroying as... It's not as bad uh, as it seems. Yeah, it's just it just derails the campaign for a hot minute and let, and makes the DM do some extra homework. Uh, also, a like, lot of them don't even really derail that hard. No, it's Some only more than like others. A little small handful of them. But 
Yeah. No, and now sure the deck of many you, things uh, is so much bigger that you can just take the ones you don't like out. Yeah. Yeah. Because and that, we got the book of many things. There's, there are, yeah, in there, there is a new deck called the deck of many more things. It is. Which uh, they've had 66 more, more cards. Yeah. Oh my God. There's so many more cards. Crazy. <laughs> Maybe too many more. A little bit. <laughs> Word of advice for anyone actually who gets this and wants to pull from it just be naked. Trust me. My players did that actually. <laughs> He's like, right, Matt, I only want yeah. he's like, I want my my shittiest rapier on me just in case I draw like death or something. Um, or if I if I, you know, whatever, you know, get a ruin or something. And uh, yeah, he drew death. So that was fun. <laughs> it really must suck to have to fight death with like a shitty, like <laughs> mundane rapier. Just being like, <laughs> yeah. damn it. <laughs> yeah, like I've, I've also had so like. I first heard about this from the Matt Colville video and I thought it was super cool. And when that video came out, this is when I was in Joe's campaign and I told him about the deck. So he kept throwing it at my character constantly, like teasing it like, oh, yeah, Matt, oh, there's gambling cards. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then finally, my first character who was, you know, a thief rogue, when he got his hands on it, I managed to pull from the deck three fucking times. Somehow survive. <laughs> And uh, it never it never came up again until Strixhaven when I gave it to my players and they pulled every all 20 fucking cards. That is so insane. I just. Yeah. Yeah. All 20 is, fuck, a, is a, it's a great commit to the bit. I ain't even going to lie. Yeah. And I, now, yeah like, I, I, oh, I'm sorry. The, no, as you said, the last one was the, the player. I told you guys this on uh, off off podcast, but like they knew the what the last two cards were. One of them was the idiot. That minus your intelligence, and the other one was the the one that gave you a plus two to whatever stat. So he's like, Matt, I'm not gambling. I'm drawing both cards. Give me my fucking plus two. I'll be dumb. <laughs> I'll be dumb. And I think he rolled Bro. like max. So I think his intelligence is now like a five. God, I I can't. I, I, I you know I I I have to appreciate the commitment to that bit. Mm, but uh, he's also the, the rune knight bro. fighter, so he's like, I'm extra strong now. <laughs> I sure, yeah. Forehead more Just... predominant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brow Actual ridge. Actual knuckle dragger now. Yeah, brow yeah. ridge much further. It's great. He's been giving everybody like one or two word responses now, and everyone's like, "Hey, fighter, are you okay?" No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You need a hug, buddy? No. <laughs> Don't touch it. <laughs> Don't touch it. <laughs> I, it's, oh. it's, been, it's been hysterical. That's yo, my man. Oh my my man, is, my man is riding the struggle bus on that it's, one. It's great. I, I love it. I love all the all the cards my players pulled. Oh my uh, God. One of them we're currently <laughs> dealing with the uh, the devil one because. One of the players pulled the the one that like you know a devil is like after you now, <laughs> and uh, one of the players has been voided, and another one has been dungeon. So uh, trying to figure out how that's going. Oh my it. god! I'm sorry, kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just, are you okay? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> It shouldn't be as funny as it is. But it's not, it really shouldn't. He's been he's been really heavily like doing the like again just like one. It also doesn't help because he's like, hey man, I just got off my night shift. I really don't want to talk this session. Well, you know, that's oh, a no. he has a good reason now. It's great. Oh, oh, I'll quickly go through the rest of mine. Uh, Hand of Vecna. I just think this is such a cool fucking item. Like, it has so much history within the game. It like just from like Gary, you know, Gary and all them. But like, it's a it's so evil. You have to cut off an appendage to even use the fucking thing. And when you do, like, it, it's it's also it's a two part item. So if you have the hand and eye, you're even more powerful. Yes. Um, but yeah, it gives you. It also gives you all the lore into it. It literally tells you like Orcus, the demon prince taught Vecna the rituals to become a lich and blah, 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 and, you know, all this shit. And then you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the fucking page to figure out what the hand does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
which you know, a lot, it's the, there's a lot the of hand. lore baked into that bad boy. Yeah, it's cool. It's like, oh, you know, Thanos caught it. Like, oh, you get one minor beneficial property, one beneficial one, one detrimental one. Your strength becomes 20 if it wasn't already. And like, a, it gives you a bunch of free spells. Great. Cool, cool item. I want to use this and or throw this at my players, but also it. I want to find a non evil version. Because like. Most of my players are pretty much like, you know, they're going to magic school. So it's like, I don't I don't want I don't need one of them turning evil like randomly. Uh, like mid midway wait, through the game right wait, now. It gives you a strength of 20. Yes, sir. Does, Vec does Vecna even have a strength of 20? What? No, no, sir. I well, I guess the idea is that you fight Vecna. He doesn't have those items right that's like he because when you look at his actual hand he's got like a metal gauntlet thingy they changed the way how it looks i guess I, to uh, make it more thanos like i mean it's yeah weird. they're weird i just okay all right yeah okay. <laughs> um staff of defense uh rare item from lost minds of fendelver this yeah, one, I, I, have a I don't know anything it's, about this thing. Yeah, it's it's a it's a slender hollow staff made of glass. Yeah, it's strong as an oak. Uh, you get a plus one bonus to AC. It has ten charges. It can let you cast mage armor or shield, and uh -huh. it regains the charges all day. So for like me, okay, playing a wizard for the first time, playing the abjuration wizard, who his main spell is shield or counter spell, picking this up at like level two or three was the best fucking thing and i used it throughout the entirety of storm king's thunder it was my main fucking weapon what my was it what, wait what's his rarity rare huh. so we found it early it's found in lost minds of fendelver um spoilers for a nearly 10 year old adventure but like there's a bunch of bad guys in the town you go into their their lair you beat them and then you find out oh no there's a fucking shit's going on in the mine but then the, the main bad guy in there is a wizard with this staff and you kill him and then you can take it. And so for me, being a wizard with a magic item that not only increased my AC by one, but also gave me the shield spell for free. Fucking for free. For free. Yeah, I fucking broke it. Nice. For free. <laughs> my DM got mad at me. He's like, Matt, why do you even prepare shield? And I'm like, I'm the abjuration wizard. If I run out of charges, which I never did, but if I run out of charges ever, just in case, <laughs> I, always made, I always made sure I never got down to like two charges because I'm like, I don't want my staff to disintegrate. I was like, that's always the thing with like a lot of these recharge weapons. Like if you roll one on the D20, it has no charges. It just just melts. You just <laughs> like the wand of fireball. And I'm like, no, <laughs> my doesn't the wand of fireball like self-destruct if you run out of charges and roll a one. I, you know, I don't know. I feel like it does. Um, Maybe. But yeah, that was just mostly like a personal attachment to me just because it was my, my lizard wizards first real magic item and his main like magic item he used throughout the whole campaign. I don't even I think. Really like Wait, no, what were you saying? Sorry. I was gonna say, I just really like the, the flavor of it being made of glass, but it's strong yeah. as wood. That's so cool. Uh, yeah. There's, um, I, I don't know where the art is. They have art of it, and like the top of it is like a little crown thing, too. Uh, I'll, I'll find it later. Uh, Cloak of Billing, we talked about this earlier, but like, yeah, bonus action. It's a freebie. I love this fucking thing. In, I think, in the three year game, I think for some reason, me and my because we're like oh it's so cool why is it a bonus action i'm like you know what it just always billows it's a cloak of constantly billowing and so my entire all my players had one so they're just always fucking billowing <laughs> <laughs> oh but i kind of like the flavor of the fact that you can choose it right because if your character gets mm -hmm. hype it's billowing and then they get like something makes them sad and you're like they're wah, wah, and they just kind of <laughs> goes limp <laughs> it <just> stops <laughs> yeah or it's keyed to your mood. That's a good one, too. Mm -hmm. I think one of my players it. has. I'm oh, sorry. No, what were you going to say? No, that's it. Just if you can't actually control it, it just it's like a mood ring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think they made a mood ring magic item in D&D. &D. I don't 
Fuck, I don't remember what it's called, but I think there is one. Oh, it's gonna kill me. I'm gonna look for it later. Um, yeah, very f flavorful, fun. Just you know, it it doesn't do it doesn't give you a bonus to AC or anything. It's just fun cloak. The teeth of a Dalvernier. Dalvernier. Nar. Uh, this shit's wait. This shit's nuts. Yeah. Oh, what were you say? Ah, shit. Now I forgot. I was. I had a question about the staff of defense thing. Oh, damn it. what? Now I can't remember. God damn it. Anyway, uh, all right. Uh, well, so you had fun with the staff of defense in your game. That's why it's in there. Yeah. All right. Fuck. I wish I could. I was reading something on my phone, and then my brain shut down. God damn it. Anyway, all right. The no, you're cloak good. of billowing. <laughs> we had the teeth of. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. Uh, artifact weapon. I. I just love. Isn't how it like you plant the teeth and they grow shit? Yes. Yeah, so it's a it's a bag of teeth normally, teeth. Uh, and what you teeth. do is you can either, yeah, each teeth is uh, from a different monster, a different creature, and each one represents a different story or tale. And what you can do is you can either implant the tooth into your own fucking mouth to get a magical benefit, or you can plant it in the ground to summon a random thing. And depending on the tooth, like I'll just I'm just gonna randomly pick one right here. The Legend of Phantoms and Ghosts Obsidian Human Molar Tooth. If you insert this into your mouth as an action, you can use the tooth to cast the uh, Black Tentacle spell with a DC of 18. You use it once per day. If you plant the tooth in the ground like a seed, it sprouts one giant octopus, one mage, and a specter. Nice. An octopus. Why not? I don't know. That's the story. Fair enough. It does it say what is there? Does it say what the stories are? No, it just gives you the story title and what the tooth is. Oh, are yeah, the stories so somewhere in the book or something? No, you basically have you to make them up. Motherfuckers. Yeah, they're like, I oh, like you that. Figure out the M. I like that one is nine cats. <laughs> it's just nine, nine cats. cats. I love cats, but that's too. Like some of them are just meany, like the starring cats of Uldun Uldundar. Okay. Mm -hmm. The tooth has so eight yeah, charges like as an action. You can expend a charge to cast or vivify a spell from a tooth if you're dead. Wait, what? So you can summon creatures or use the effect? Yeah, that's, that's what I was saying. You can either oh, I'm, I'm insert the tooth into your mouth and into your basically mouth. Your uh. yeah, that's, that's what you gotta do. Gross. Or you plant the tooth in the ground and it summons the creatures. One just and so you counter. have a bag of these teeth. So like, hypothetically, gross. Yeah, you could replace all your teeth with these. Oh god. Uh, I just I kind of want to do the thing where my, I throw one of the teeth at my players and see what happens. It requires attunement though, so you can yes, only sir. potentially have three teeth, right? Uh, technically, these are this is one magic item, so no, uh, you attune to the bag of teeth. Uh, I'm sorry. What? Yes, sir. It's a. It's a. It's not just the teeth. It's it's an entire bag of teeth. So you it. could just put every tooth in your mouth and have all these ridiculous. I think they actually do have a limit on how many. There teeth must be a know. limit. There's no fucking way. There has to Hope be. You a put limit. them all in your face. <laughs> <laughs> Make me so happy. <laughs> I. Oh God wrong bud it's just the idea of, <laughs> of just jamming to random especially because like the cat one is ivory cat molar then there's one that's golden goblin bicuspids halfling canine emerald oh. lizard folk so it's all these different animals sweet take oh um, I, I i found it so you can have a maximum number of teeth implanted uh one plus your constitution modifier so if you're a barbarian you're fucking yeah, set so many teeth. you're set dude uh I'm sorry, the one that summons Incubi, sweet tasting human canine. I'm sorry, what? What? what, what, what I don't what? like that. <laughs> what do you mean by sweet tasting canine? That's so gross. That's so gross. <laughs> Bruh. Okay. Daughters of Bell, green steel pit fiend fang. Oh. Okay. I think Wizards also made these a natural like item for sale. 
Like if you look up like uh, I think from WizKids or something, you can buy them. And of course, they're all different shaped teeth and stuff. So yeah, <laughs> really fun, crazy item. I Jesus. Again, I think I'm just gonna throw one or two of these teeth at my players and just see what happens. It's for the lols. Just for the lols, yeah. Sure. Uh, now time for my fizzmans. Uh, same thing. Send a dragon wrath weapon. It's again story wise with these magic uh magic weapons and planting them into a dragon horde after you kill it or persuade it to let you do that steep it in the horde great fictional story wise mechanic wise you know you have a magic weapon of some kind it uh what is it on a natural 20 it does you know extra five damage of whatever the dragon that you let steeped you know later on it gets to become you know plus one plus two plus three does extra like d6 damage of the dragon um, and then this last one basically just gives you a, you know, dragon breath attack or dragon breath like attack. Very cool. Very flavorful. Can become legendary evolving, evolving weapons. Very good. Uh, please, please, please do more wizards, please. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yes, the, giving your giving your players dra uh, dragon breath attack via a uh, big sword or whatever is a fun time. I'm not going to lie. I kind of mm -hmm. love just the visual of you putting one of the, like the dragon tooth in and you just have the stupid anime <laughs> snaggle tooth. <laughs> I mean, we were not talking about the teeth, mm -hmm. but yeah, sure. Fair enough. Sorry. My, my brain was stuck on the teeth. You went back to the teeth. Like, the, the teeth. Dude, the teeth are such a cool, a little it's bit. such a cool fucking con. I think they've also been in the edition in the game for a bunch of editions. Well, they're not really? like, it's not like a brand new item. I've never heard of them, but also I wouldn't be that surprised. Also, fun, fun fact, uh, the Del Nahir guy, he's the he's in Curse of Strahd. He's one of the evil powers, I guess, which is weird because supposedly he's like a human priest. But I guess his whole backstory is he was a shapeshifter or change. I don't know, like changer or whatever. And basically you pray to him in Curse of Strahd and one of the things that can happen is, is every time you die, you get reincarnated as if the reincarnation spell. So you just come back as a different race. Oh, fun. Well, you can never leave, you know, the domain of dread. So you're just always there, always dying and oh, being great. reincarnated as another thing. Oh, so, so, you, so your life just sucks. Your life just sucks. I was going to say, you're having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> you're there just doing that. My existence is pain. Mm. Yes. I have a mouth and I can scream, but there's no one to fucking hear me. Christ. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so the Strixhaven Haven primers, this is actually something I really love that came out from the Strixhaven books. There's yeah, one what per college. Do? Strix hmm? What do these so do? Each one basically does the same thing. Depending on the college, the skills change and the spells you can pick change. But what it does is it permanently lets you, it has three charges. And you can extend the charge to gain. Uh, let's see, is it? I think you can add a D. You can add a D4. It basically gives you a permanent bless on two spells or two skills. Sorry. Mm. And the skills depend on what college you what pick. College. So like Lorehold is all about like archaeology and magic and shit and history. So if you are attuned to this, you get a, you know, a D4 for history or religion full free. What, permanently for free? Uh, you get three charges, but like still oh. that. And then if you stack bless on top of that or guidance or whatever, yeah. like an like ultimate skill monkey. And then the, the big thing with this as well is besides it being uncommon is in addition, if you, you know, at the end of a long rest, you could pick one spell from either, you know, each college lets you pick from either one spell list or another. And you just have that spell and you can cast it once a day for free. OK. So very cool, uncommon item for very low level spell casters. Anyone can use these and it just works. Yes, yes. yes. because the Strixhaven thing, it's like you have a druid, you can give them this. You have a cleric, you can give them one of these. You have a bard, you can give them one of these sorcerer. Like it works with every spell caster. Your players have any of these? Yeah. Funny enough, they have a bunch of them and they don't have the ones for their particular colleges just so they can like uh, 
gain the system and get like different <laughs> different skills to help him. Of course. <laughs> yep. Oh man, <laughs> your player. Yeah. Munchkins, uh, a lot of you. Um, I think if I was going to rank any of these items, this would probably be my most favorite one. Strict saving primers? No, no. Uh, the next one, the uncommon uh. glamour weave from Eberron. Basically, this is there's two different versions of this. Both of them do the same first effect, but this one's the the better version. Also uncommon, so it's like you can easily get this early into Eberron. And it's basically uh, clothing, whatever. As a bonus act, action, you can have illusion patterns like shift and move on the clothes. So like. You can have some pieces of the clothes rise. So if you're like wearing a dress made of like illusionally fire and like you have like little billows of uh, puffs of flames like at the end of your dress or have like kaleidoscope fucking tuxedo. You can do that. And it's, it's fucking awesome. It's, it's so, so much meme potential. How is this? Uh, how is this different than like glamoured armor? So glamoured armor, um, I think with that one, it lets you cast disguise disguise self, I believe. Whereas this is not you're not really disguising yourself. You're literally just changing the illusion on your outfit. So it's more of a cosmetic thing than it's like, like it's like the fashion cyberware shit in cyberpunk. Yeah. But it's like a fantasy and, version of that. Yeah. And like with this one, um, you get an extra D for on performance or persuasion checks while wearing this. Yeah, yeah so, pretty nice. So it gives you a little bu- a little again, another guidance buff to do skills, but like also just the fact that like, I can have kaleidoscope clothing or a suit that just changes or pretends I'm wearing fire or whatever. It, it It's it's cool. I think it's neat. And you call you said this would be your favorite one on the list. This is probably be my favorite magic item of all time. Yeah, this surprises me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very. I mean, it's it's not bad, but it's very basic. Mm. I just, I, I, don't oh, okay. know. I, I just like the idea of it, like magic clothes changing, like because again, you get this at low level, so you can actually like use it. Unlike most of the other items on my fucking list. I mean, yeah. Uh, okay. The you know, it's 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 a cool idea fictionally, but like as a magic item, as like a mechanical game designy thing, it's pretty like. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just it's like whatever. It's fine. Like it's nothing super like it's cool, but it's nothing super special. Mm. I mean, the lore implication is fun, but I feel like you could have had the lore implication without it being like a magic item. You know, well, it's, it doesn't require attunement. So like, that's the other thing. It's just no, I know. I'm just saying from a from a game standpoint, this it just it to me, it feels like something that could just be a lore item. Like it doesn't need to be magic items specifically. Mm. They also have there's another there's another clothing in Ebron uh, magic item called Shift Weave. Uh-huh. And it's basically a it's a magic suit or dress or whatever that you can embed five other like outfits into. Uh-uh. So as a bonus action, you can have different outfits like just swapping in between them all. Yeah, what a Chad maneuver walking up to the party and just changing your digs every time. Exactly. Uh, I every just time. checked. The only difference between Glamour Weave and Glamoured Armor is that obviously Glamoured Armor gives you an AC increase. I was going to say um, Glamoured Armor is armor. Yeah, because it's armor. Glamour Weave allows you to add a, a D4 to a persuasion or um, performance check. It's almost like that's what Matt said. Is it? It's yeah. exactly what Matt said. Yeah. I'm sorry. I must have missed that. Um, no, you're good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he said it twice. <laughs> Did my brain shut off? I'm so, look, I'm sorry. I've, uh, apparently, it's been a long day. <laughs> I got you, Matt. I heard you say that. Thank you. No, it's all good. It's all good. I can't believe it. Like, I, there, I there's, there's just two zoned different out. versions. I'm there's so a, sorry. Were you no, just no, like you high as two... shit for a second there? Like, I don't <laughs> No, no. I just fucking. Uh, my brain just went smooth. Just all of the there's wrinkles two just versions. ironed out. Okay. There's one there's that doesn't uncommon. have the D4, and there's yeah. one that does have the D4. Mm. Well, uh, also glamour so maybe, weave that word specifically is like an Eberron setting thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, weird. It also so the uncommon also is what allows stuff to come off of the clothing itself. 
the like yeah. standard uh, you unless you said that he did yes <laughs> <laughs> i was just gonna let him go <laughs> <laughs> look i i genuinely i was paying attention i just lost time i'm not no, terrified good, dude, you're good. <laughs> i don't know what the fuck Isaiah happened. just had a stroke or some shit <laughs> apparently bro i <laughs> he time traveled oh, he's like yes <laughs> matt was oh, describing how you could have a dress made of like fire and the fire could trail off of the dress yeah yeah so so that i heard i did hear that i didn't okay. i didn't i didn't hear the the comment i was putting into my own that. words the example that, <laughs> that was what he meant that's what he was referring to the the yeah. images coming off of it thing no again i heard that i just didn't hear the dis the, the the difference in rarity is what allowed that oh, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, he was only talking about the uncommon one specifically. Oh, then you didn't. No, he said that. Well, said, he said at the beginning, the uncommon glamour weave. Yeah. There's glamour weave and then uncommon. I yeah, said. there's gl there's glamour weave, common glamour weave, and uncommon glamour yeah, weave. Yeah, but okay, no, no, no. Matt so specified he didn't the uncommon. Specify yes, he did. He, he said the uncommon glamour weave. I heard him say it. He absolutely specified no, but that. He didn't. At no point did he say the common glamour weave does not let you do that. I, I oh, said I didn't that say the, that part. No, I said at the after I it, read everything from the uncommon glamour weave. Oh, well, okay, I missed that part. But ah, <laughs> see, <laughs> ah, <laughs> mm, I heard everything else he said. <laughs> I can't, I can't defend you on this, sir. I don't, I don't know. I heard about seventy percent of it. Uh, sure. Yeah, favorite favorite D&D &D item. <laughs> it's fun. Fair enough. <laughs> Illusion clothes. <laughs> Matt likes Eberron. I do, yeah. Everon cool. Ever Everon cool. I miss Sam. <laughs> that was so random, sir. What the fuck? I don't know. I know what you meant, but like, what the fuck? Oh, lastly, Last certainly one. not least. Um, uh, new item. Uh, very, very sad. There's no fucking art for this, cause goddamn it, wizards. Why? Yeah. Why would we have art for our magic items? Uh, cause it's expensive, my guy. Uh, I don't care. Oh, the Worm Reaver Gauntlets. I These are I basically can't argue with gi that. <laughs> gi <laughs> giants. Giants uh, in D and D really don't like gi uh, dragons. Uh -huh. So, what you know, some might do is they take their skin, they make armor. No, no, no. Giants will also oh, take their these fucking are the... skulls and make them into fucking knuckle dusters. Yes, these are the magic so fist cool. weapons they find <laughs> in the game. That's right. Yeah, these studded gauntlets are engraved with the rune, the dragon rune. They. You know, you unarmed strikes deal an extra 1d6 force damage. In addition, you can, uh, I think you, you can add or change the damage to being like acid, cold, fire, lightning, poison because chromatic dragons. Uh, also, every magic item or most of the magic items in Big Beast have this you extra power called runes. invoking the runes, yeah. which is another additional effect. Most of them end up being a bonus action. I fucking love this one. Because it lets you summon spectral fucking JoJo hands. <laughs> let's go. Wait, they so, last so you can Ora Ora the dragons? Exactly. You can Ora the dragons with your yep. dragon gauntlets. They give you an extra 30 feet reach. Uh, you hit a, you know, you can uh, hit a creature with an opportunity attack with your arm strike. They make a strength save or they're knocked prone. It's, it's fucking great. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah, super I, cool. Uh, definitely check out check out Big Bees for the magic. Uh, the items. rune but, invoking thing is is also what made Rune Knight cool. Yes, yes. It's Even like though they Rune keep Knight doing that. came out with Tasha's and not Big Bees, but you know, you know it's weird. They fucking yeah, Storm King's Thunder, and they had some Rune magic items in there. Yep. And then they just never worked on them until until now. They're like, oh, Rune Knight, cool. Let's do that. And then yeah. people really like the Rune Knight. They're like, hmm, maybe we should do a whole book about this. I. I wish the Jojo Fist lets you make extra attacks. I know why they don't, but like, mm. I was I for a second I was really holding out hope that they brought a fragment of the old um, astral self back, where your whole thing was I just punch more. They did not. They did not. I'm saying it. Yeah. Uh, honorable mention because uh, I use this with my my uh, my rogue for one shot. For Joe's campaign, uh, Glamber's. Uh, oh my God, I can't talk. Uh -huh. Gambler's uh -huh. Blade, Jesus, from the, uh, the Lost Laboratory of Kowalsh, which was one of those uh, fundraiser adventures. Wizard from of the Coast released on DM's Yep. Uh, I just love the fact that it's 
a magic item that lets you change if it's a plus one or a plus three, but then you take a penalty to death saving throws depending on what rare or like what the bonus is. So like if you choose to make the blade a plus three, you have a minus, minus three, three to your death saves. Mm. I love the idea that I can choose that, that shit. Is, that like, oh, is some is rock out with your cock out type shit. I like it. Yeah. I do love that, yeah. It's also cursed for some reason. You're unwilling to part with the weapon. I. This is absolute. My bad. Yeah. No, no, no. What were you going to say? Oh, no, no, what ant, were you this, this is literally Ant's perfect weapon. This is, it it is ant, yes. you know, <laughs> LP, I live or die by the 50 50 versus, uh, underscore yes. versus, sorry. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This is absolutely his kind of item. And so I'm so cool. surprised I, he didn't take this in that campaign. I wish curses. I wish the curse was cooler. Like, I don't know, like it makes you want to attack creatures more or like something and it makes you more battle hardy rather than you just don't want to. You just want to golem it. And it's like, yeah, every fucking curse item wants you to golem it. Wizards, <laughs> every magic item else. has that curse. Yeah, every, just yeah, because exactly. players aren't going to give it up. Yeah. Like, yeah, you can come up with some creative like you always want to attack the nearest enemy or you, I don't know, you rush in the battle or some shit. You're reckless. You, you can reckless attack. I don't know. Some. Well, I, I know. I think that I think the simple one, right, is it's a gambler's blade. It just compels you to want to gamble. Yeah. You mm. just act more brashly. You're like, yeah. you could be yeah. like, oh, you know, anytime there are two decisions to be made, roll a wisdom save. That'd be sick. Yeah, that'd be cool. But uh, yeah, um, good, good list, guys. I I'm very happy with all the magic items we <laughs> we picked. I there cram- wasn't one. I, I crammed I ex- for this test so hard. You're welcome. I was expecting like one or two. Uh, like I would expect expecting one of us to be like, oh, that item. What the fuck? That's lame. No, it, each one. All good. Magic I items, mean, you can't go wrong. There's not that many magic then, items to like. There's a lot of magic items. There's a lot, but are there any that I'd look at and be like, that's lame and you're wrong? I, probably not, really. I mean, I don't think so. Um, there's probably some, but you know. Some, yeah, I can't think of it right now, but there's, there's probably some. Oh, I got you. The stupid hmm. coin that lets you flick it off the edge of a cliff to see oh, how the long Dover's it takes. Coin? Yeah. I kind of like that, though. That it's, one's kind of yeah. funny because it's just goof. Yeah, I, yeah, but like, <laughs> it's just dumb that you remove the magic. Eye. Like, it's gone now. Yes, <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't come back to you. Yeah, mm. be kind of funny if you just found it in your pocket and you're like, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, if it was a returning item, that'd be sick. <laughs> no, I just wanted to bounce. <laughs> it bounces the floor. The it bounces all. You <laughs> hear? <laughs> you hear it drop? Right? You get the Doppler effect, and then you get the Doppler effect in reverse as it bounces back up towards you. <laughs> Is yeah, it, but you're right because you're like, don't you know like how deep it is too when yeah. the coin hits? It's so funny. Yeah, you, you, I think you you get a feeling on whether or not it's like deadly or not. It's like so it gets fine, all the way to the hurt. bottom. This is bad. <laughs> you're dead. It gets all the way to the bottom. You go. Oh, it's a thousand feet. And yeah, see, that's what I she's coming back up. <laughs> and give it a few seconds, guys. Hold on. Give me like thirty seconds. There it is. All right. Okay. Oh fuck! I dropped it again. Ah oh, <laughs> shit! I dropped it. You have to just wait again. <laughs> yeah, you gotta wait for it to bounce again. It's like some kind of weird infinite bouncy ball. <laughs> just doesn't 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 lose any momentum. Mm. Uh, but yeah, yeah, good good job, uh, good list. Uh, what are your? Uh, don't call it a nine by nine like I've been doing. Uh, it is not a nine by nine. It's a three by uh, three. Yeah. What are your three by threes? Uh, uh, let us know on uh, whatever. Follow us on Twitter. Yeah. Follow us on Twitter where we will uh, at some point in the next few days be posting the uh, give us your hot takes uh, little questionnaire thingy. I don't, I don't know if we should out. promise the next few days necessarily, but all right. Yeah, sure. You'll make a well, mega actually, I guess when this episode. goes live, that's probably a more reasonable statement. Yeah. Yeah. No, all right. Fair enough. You, yeah, you win. Mm-hmm. You win this one. Let us let us critique your cringe opinions. Yeah. Be be true to your cringe self. Look, I, I've or already gotten with some your base takes. from Unless our friends, don't. and when I say, s- I, <laughs> listen, listen, be true to your cringe self, but only if you can handle the roast. True, true. Sorry, uh, what we were gonna say? I didn't mean to. Say, <laughs> we, I've sent the, I've sent this to our some of our friends already, and I've got thirty uh, plus responses, so I can't wait to read them out. Jeez, some of them thirty response. 
over 30 because there are some that actually followed the rules and put all of their different ones on one. So some of them, oh, some of them are going to have to raf- rapid fire and just go cringe take, shit take, cringe take, cringe, debatably cringe yeah, take. Much. I'm going to need, I'm going to need much, a cringe yeah. button. Hold on. I'm going to have to find yeah, just that. Get a, get I'm not, a, get I'm a, not even that was easy it. button, but it just says cringe, <laughs> cringe. Yeah. I'm, I'm and then another one says lie. base. Yep. Some of these are so fucking funny, bro. Oh, God. <laughs> I can't wait, dude. All one right. Well, uh, just a straight call wait. out. It's so good. T- uh, tune in next. Cr- no. Yeah. Not next week. Nope. Nope. Week uh, after. Week after that. Mm. Cause tune in next time. Tune in next week for Dagger Heart discussion, baby. We're talking about Dagger Heart. Oh, shit. I no. Yes, you do, boys. It's not five got- years. Nah. You both have homework to do, motherfuckers. Re- Don't you worry. I'll do most of the homework for you. Does this diploma mean nothing? I thought the point of the diploma <laughs> means you don't gotta do homework no more. Yeah, it sucks to suck, but we'll cheat it. All right, goodbye and good night, or Peace not, or good morning. I don't know when you're listening to this. Time is not real. <laughs>